You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. My oh, dad used to make me go and fight, but I'd lose. But my mum just looked at me and went, now go and get them. So where she said it quietly, I'll never forget, I've done all three of them. Because I had passion to do it with. It's just something she said made me stick up for myself. So from then on, I think I started to fight a lot. But he pulled a knife out on me. Yeah. But it ain't no ego. I just didn't feel nothing. I didn't feel scared. I was just more angry. Like right, that he made the move first. And I thought, I went, no, no problem. I sat there, we looked at each other. I thought, no problem at all. I went, calm down. Yeah. All right. He sat down. He, and I watched him not lick his lips. He felt good about, you know, confronted me a little bit. And I went out of the kitchen and uh, got a knife, come back in the shirt, and then I went, listen, I'm going now, shake hands, and then I, I stabbed him. How did I not have the power to say no to all these people years ago? Why have I got to go and help them all? When have they ever give a fuck? Some have, when I've been in prison. When have anyone else give a fuck when I'm in prison? Me to sit on here in an interview today, and there's a lot of people who know me out there. Me to come here and see you today is a breath of fucking fresh air for me. Do you understand me? Because mm -hmm. I've got a great team behind me now, probation team. Got some good people still in my life. And I, I, I'm entitled to some happiness at least, surely. Whether I've done some, I've done a lot of bad things to people and I'm very sorry. I drove round to see if he was dead or not, in a car. And then I went to prison on the sixth year for the stabbing, sort of to keep you out of all the violence. Yeah. But then I was stabbing the uh, uh, sex offenders, bashing them, putting bread on the cameras in prison. I used to get bread on a stick, put them up, and the prison officers go, he's one, bad one. Yeah? Like a child, done a child in a um, uh, uh, stable, advertised for a stable, or saying, girl, she got down and he raped her. I couldn't live with it. But it always, all the prison, used to come to me, yet again. Getting this used. was a, a common occurrence that I thought, why don't someone else do this for a change, yeah? Because I was ruthless. I'm not just hurting a prisoner. I've got a prisoner crawling on his chest, nearly getting it, like with a balaclava on. Got my own squat team in there. I couldn't even put all my violence into a short story because it's too much. Like the ag I've had over the years, pain. Because we spoke earlier and the man who you killed says, what was his last words? Yeah, uh, well, that's powerful. Um, well, them things hit me that one, but I'll answer it because I'm a man. Yeah, good call. Yeah, because I'm not going to be a coward. Um, I, I looked into my unused evidence. He said, tell my wife and kids I love them because he was dying to me. That's mm -hmm. the first time I thought, like, fucking hell, you know? Boom, we're on. All right, mate. And today's guest, we've got London's Tony Argent. How are you, brother? Thank you, James. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show, yeah. Tony. Yeah. I know you've been kind of battling whether to come on or not. Yeah. You're just out of prison last yeah. year. Yeah. You've done over you went 20 off. Yeah, you yeah. Went off ago, yeah. You've done over 20 years for murder. Yeah. You're now at the stage where you want to make changes. Yeah, definitely. You want to help the youth. Yeah. You want to be, you're still young. Yeah. You know a lot of people who's been on this show as well. Yeah. First of all, how are you? Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good making a big change, like massive change. Start running to a close, close the door on a, uh, you know, I'm never going to, the past ain't never going to leave you, but I'm going to try and move forward and uh, leave that leave that shit behind, that yeah. world behind, to be fair. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're looking yeah. real. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, James. Yeah. I know a lot of people who's been yeah. inside with you and they says you were a yeah. fitness fanatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boxing, thank you, James. running. Yep, doing six mile, mi six yeah. minute miles. Yep, that's the one. Um, but I know you're now trying. We speak quite frequently now. You're trying to make changes. Yeah, you're trying to become a better person. Yeah, and it is difficult, but you're here. You're here to tell your story mm. to try and help others. Now you're very well respected mm. all over the UK, but you don't really care for that shit anymore. Nah, nah, not at all. Nah. Yeah, nah. I always go back with the start, my guest Tony. Mm, yeah. Where you grew up and how it all began? Uh, I grew up in a, uh, it was a place just off Silvertown Way in Custom House in East London. It was more, it was a weird little strange place really because it was like 
right next to uh, the docks. So it was probably just built for that dock, which is East India Dock. So it was Tidal Basin. So it was the, probably the most depressing place. Like I was born in a tower block on the 20th floor. So like, it's, it, it was wind off the river. Yeah, I remember watching some ships coming in when I was little from the 20th floor, opposite taking Lowell's sugar factory. And uh, basically it was two, uh, two big blocks of flats, a circle of shops, the docks, that was it, and bomb sites. 20 year, I bombed 20 years after the war. So it was all bomb sites still, like five places hanging off of houses. And I used to think, oh, God, why is all these buildings still smashed? Because the East End was the biggest bomb part of anywhere, wasn't it, with the docks, because it was, uh, you know, where they used to have all the animations and all that being built, factories. So I grew up there. And for early day remembrance there, I used, I used to go nursery, and I can still remember, some people think, how oh, can you remember? Is I used to get my head punched in a lot, yeah, at nursery. Over, uh, you know, I remember this cube thing I used to play with, and this other kid was used to want it, this square shape thing. So I don't think there was a day when... Uh, I grew up there where I was uh, I was in battle with someone or something, and I had a brother Brian, uh, brother David, and a sister Mandy. But my brother David comes seven years before. But my saviour was my brother because of uh, back in the day, he was a bit more ruthless. I was quite a soft kid, you know what I mean? Didn't really fancy a fight. Didn't really know I could fight. So going through infant school, uh, all I remember is just. It wasn't a nice experience for me, do you know what I mean? It was like, I played with a kid for 10 minutes or so there. I don't know what it was, perhaps it come off the river, who knows, like the, the air. And then a the kid would be playing me, get bored. 10 minutes later, just crack, you know, you're on the nose. And uh, finished playing with you. And then, uh, um, yeah, mum and dad, hard workers, but we was, there weren't much case of money coming indoors, not just for us, it was a lot of us around there. Was it was like wasn't very well off. Do you understand me? If you still had the, uh, we still used to have the uh, sugar strikes, bread strikes. My mum used to send us to go and get two loaves because you only word one loaf a family. So I remember it was hard. It was hard growing up there. But uh, I can't say I didn't have a good memories there. But I had some good memories there. But it was just a tough, tough uh, place to grow up. Yeah. What about your schooling and stuff? Um. Do you know, at school, to be fair, at school, I wasn't very academic, really. I wasn't very, uh, I was very behind. I didn't like school. I just I just never showed, I was a daydreamer. I just like, uh, I like the games, the PE part, but I never wanted to study or do anything, you know, where my sister and brother are so a bit more educated than me, quite a lot more, you know, like, the, you know. But I've, um, I never liked school. I uh, never liked the teachers there, do you know? There was an headmaster there, I won't mention his name, but he was, uh, he just didn't seem to like me and my brother. He's always like, you know, I remember growing up watching my brother. I looked up my brother because he's older than me. So I'd see him in a big hall writing a thousand lines in front of everyone. So yeah. I used to think, that's my brother, do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, because I used to look up to him, I was proud <laughs> that he was like, uh, you know, I didn't want to go where he's going. I mm -hmm. think he's like, he's, he's something else he is, you got me? But I've kind of had this little proudness for him of his rebellion, yeah. you got me? But I was too, uh, I didn't have the bottle to do what he'd done, like smash a window, whatever he'd done, or he have a fight at school. Mm -hmm. But I used to watch him sometimes once he sat there on his own, where everyone has to pass you to look at you because you're a bad child kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I used to look up to him a lot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I so used you're kind of not an outsider from the class, but you didn't really want to focus and study no, as much. No, never. Do you know, even from an early age, never. No, mm -hmm. never, ever. Lived in my own little fantasy world, like playing with me soldiers, I have to go home, get me fought out, you know what I mean? Play with all my toy soldiers, yeah. battling away. You know, even the old man used to tell me to shut up sometimes, I was that lad. <laughs> you know, I was saying some, yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah. shooting at each other and that. Yeah. yeah. And I liked me films, like the Roman films, Ben Hur. Mm -hmm. I was just like a kid who just liked watching loads of telly and that. Yeah. But I remember, he, my mum won't mind me saying, we had a metre on our telly. If that went, then you had a metre for this, a metre for that. So sometimes things were hard and there was always a man on everyone's door in these block of flats. There was a man who used to have uh, a lot of dandruff in his hair and he used to knock on with a big black book. 
and he was named the Provident Man or whatever they used to name him. Yeah, the Provident Man. Yeah, yeah with yeah, a yeah. dandruff on his shoulder. And I used to hate him because sometimes he'd make my, um, he'd knock on my mum's door once and he made her, she was a bit upset because she didn't have the money. And that's when I first thought as a young boy, I thought, one day I'm going to beat you up, mate. Yeah? Because you cause nothing but misery. Obviously, I didn't know people lend money off the, or whatever they do, I don't know. So really, but mum and mum and dad always give me a good Christmas, but always got in debt for it. Probably I don't know, but we had good Christmases. You know what I mean? Yeah, so struggling. As a fam- yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yourself yeah. from the the kind of deprived areas, like where I'm from in Glasgow as yeah. well. Look, you could rig your meter and stuff where yeah. you got the electricity for free. Everything was yeah. You know, shoplifters to try and get yeah. cheaper clothes, and you're always yeah. trying to find a way to survive. A survival yeah. mode. There was always something for sale around yeah. there. Like, even growing up, you always had someone uh, who'd go missing for a little while. And then you see him two years later. And as a kid, I think, where have they been? Oh, and then someone said, oh, I remember one fella went missing from two doors, two flats down. And they went, oh, he had the Christmas money from the clubhouse or something. So, like, you know, there was people went missing for a little while. Sons go missing, then they come back two years later. You got me? Yeah. And then... Um, yeah, there was. A, it was. Listen, it was a. Tr- it was a troubled area, but everyone turned a blind eye to everything that you'd done there. Yeah, you just know? try to get by. Yeah. What age then did you go to secondary school or anything? Yeah, I went to secondary school, primary school. That, do you know what? There's not much to really remember from growing up. From up schooling? To, nah, not from infant school. Nah, and then I, I, I did change that school. I went to, my mum moved us from uh, from that place to Stratford, West Ham. So I went to a little flat school. Then that's my first school, Manor Road, I went to. It was just like a prison. I've never seen a Victorian school like it. So when I got there, I thought, fucking hell, what's this about? Yeah? More kids, bell, big bell ringing. And um, yeah, I went to that school there, and that's when I, um, I seemed to find uh, I had to change my kind of persona, what I was about, mate, because it was like there was a lot of fighting going on there, and I was a new kid on the block kind of thing you got me yeah so you had to think your corner yeah get a definitely reputation. Yeah. you're getting bullied at the start uh people tried it on with me yeah and then um well before sorry but jumping to conclude before that incident the three kids who used to bully me all the time years ago at, uh at the docks near this uh, school there i was uh one of them threw a stone at me one day and that's the first time instigation i got with instigation i got with violence and he he threw a stone and I was with my mum and he was sitting on his bench and hit me in the stomach, took the wind out of me. And then my dad used to make me go and fight, but I'd lose. But my mum just looked at me and went, now go and get them. So it's where she said it quietly, I'll never forget, I've done all three of them because I had passion to do it with. It's just something she said made me stick up for myself. So from then on, I think I started to fight a lot. Yeah. From- Is that when you started... Becoming violent, is that what you started? Yeah, I learned I learned from that day onwards that no one was going to, I ain't going to let no one fucking fuck with me no more and put me in that place, that yeah. scared place. Because, mm-hmm. you know, that's an, I don't, I'm never going to go there again. You yeah. know what I mean? To be a quiet kid and just kind of... I was a loving kid. Yeah. I, loved, I was just nothing. I was just like a little, you know, I was I was just enjoyed dancing at the top of the pops. You know what I mean? I used to love... That mm-hmm. was me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know... So what happened after school then? When you started getting out? Uh, after school, started doing a bit of boxing and that. After school, trying to do a bit of work. You know, like go work. But I always wanted something different. I just fucking, I just couldn't stand the drizzle light. I don't know why. I had something in my mind that I wanted to do. I was craving a bit of excitement. You got me? And then I first got with me, um, there was a gang... And uh, we used to hang around West Ham Station. I started getting acquainted with a few of us, a good about eight handed, I'd say, strong. And um, my mum used to think, like, I was going home being a good boy, but like, you know, like 10 o'clock, she'd say, you've got to be in. But we started travelling the trains and we didn't have a lot of money and didn't have a lot of stuff. I'm not, I'm not, I'm ashamed of this, really, but um, we'd look for, we just were so analyst, we were just looking for fights. We'd go to a area, pick an area on the train station. Go there, rob steal. So this was like constantly robbing and stealing shops, robbing people. I know sometimes you wouldn't believe it, it was robbing for food. 
because we used to go and they weren't McDonald's then. We used to go and get the chicken. You no, know, the chicken that used to go around on the chicken kebabs. Things. Yeah, no, 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 chicken kebab. Then it was like a chicken breast of chicken, or sausage rolls. Oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know the sh- so what we done? We used to rob people, go up posher areas, take their clothes off them on the train, come back with like a like a, a designer top. Yeah, and all the next top shores. Next top shores, next church shoes are yours. These trainers are yours. I know why some people might think that's really bad. I do. I look back now, I think, oh mate, that's, that's terrible. But that was us. We had nothing. But that was my first time, like really living with this gang day in day out. We was like, we was proper like, we was like, it was like a little family to me. You know, I like yeah. being around them. Do you feel accepted being yeah, with them? Yeah, we all did with each other. Yeah. We all had our problems, but, uh, um, mm. you know, we'd pull up on a train station. We was getting well known for it, like, and we'd buy the one pound umbrellas, sorry, like that um, little black umbrellas. So that was like a weapon, but you couldn't, if the police pulled us, we had a, like, we could say it was going to rain, even in the summer. Yeah. And uh, we used to use them as weapons. So we'd go on all the trains, we'd just pull up to a, Pick anywhere on the map, go there, and find a group of lads. And I, that was us, and we'd just have a fight. What yeah. age did you first go to prison, Tony? Uh, I was young. I think I've just turned about 15. I went to detention centre. What was that for? Um, I refused to do community service. I went to an house, community services, where you go and paint someone's house and that. And uh, I went there, and uh, my mates come past, see me on a ladder. Uh, I was painting an house, and I was on a ladder. And they started, they bib, bibbed and went, oh, they started laughing at me and all that. So when I'd gone back in the room, I felt a bit like... Embarrassed? Bit embarrassed, yeah. And the geezer went, can you pick the paintbrush up and you'll finish that before you go? I went, you know, I said to him, listen, F off, like, go, go and do it yourself, you mug. And I walked out. So when I went back to the magistrate, my poor dad took me, you know, it goes, sitting in there again, he went, you will do this community. Well, I said, no, I fucking won't, Yeah. This magistrate was shocked. He said, do you want to go to prison? I went, well, go on then, because I ain't doing it. Then that was it. But from from that moment, it's like going to a detention centre. They used to call it a short, sharp shop to learn people. Uh, my previous people have been on here, too, because I've spoke to them about it. That's the worst abusive uh, overpowering Back in the day, then people forgot what they was trying to do, mate. It's just become the most horrific, bullying. Uh, I still carry a lot of memories from that. Painful, uh, watching people get their head punched in, you know, turning a blind eye to it. Uh, Horriblest place I've ever been. Because I remember getting on this van, unknown to me, green van. We pull out the magistrate's court. I think this ain't too bad, you know watching a cup, but I always had the eye for watching the manipulation going on between boys on the van. Well, when I got there, jumped out, I went, get out of the van, move, 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 jumped out of this van. I thought, what the fuck's going on here? And then as I got in the office, I said, name a number. I didn't even name a number. Can you give me one? So I thought, I said, you ain't give me one. Bang, dummy in the stomach, steamed into me. I thought, fucking hell, I start, bomb, bomb, I start fighting for my life here, thinking, what's going on? Then they put me down to a room, shut the cell door, and that was my uh, experience laying there when they load about 100 faces looking for a flat me going, where are you from, mate? Where are you from? And I thought, fucking hell, mate. Yeah, this is like game on now. You got me? Mm-hmm. So that was my first spell of prison. It was only short, yeah. but it was uh, it made me very bitter and angry when I come out of that first one. Yeah. Very anti-authority after that. Yeah, well, you had the doctor there. They're all not, like, lots of them, no disrespect, not all of them who work there. But they were noncy, cough, drop your strides, all the boys. Like, what are you dropping your strides for? Cough, and then you've got all staff behind you. Do you understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I didn't like them then. I looked at authority as if to say, you know what? I can't stand you, because yeah. it was the wrong impression to give. And I'll never forget, I was going to have a shower there, I had a towel on. And I see these older boys, they was older than me, 21, and then this officer's got a stick with his tongue out, whacking them and they're all going oh leave off gov leave off gov so he went to hit me with a stick and I went don't fucking touch me yeah I said I'm telling you yeah he said well I'm going to give Nicky and I'm going to give you five points I went well again give me five points then something to do with point system yeah and I remember this uh, the tall fella black guy from Fulham he went listen you're all right, mate he went you star me I thought he was big and he went you star me mate you're good stuff but I just found it was brutality yeah. It was just absolutely brutality, encouraging, encouraging bullying. 
encouraging to go in a room and smash someone up, which I was never my way. I didn't like it. You got me? Mm -hmm. Watching kids cry, getting an eye in. Yeah? Because if he spoke and he, he'd give the association up, oh, you shouldn't have been speaking. So now, down to, say, they go, James English, you've lost your association. So now everyone's going to come and see you now. I don't like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when you get out after that, Tone, what was the plans? Go. Well, who was your mum and dad as well the first time you would go to prison? Gutted. Yeah, absolutely yeah. gutted. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely gutted. Uh, quite sad, seriously, yeah. Uh, yeah, my dad was heartbroken. Yeah, he was. I never knew to my mum told me many years later, my dad was mm -hmm. heartbroken to see me pull away on a van, yeah. Yeah, with obviously yeah, son yeah. and that. That's, so, that's quite sad. See, now, even now, like, I'm not a soft guy. Like, sometimes, like, my dad's dead now. I lost my dad years ago when I was uh, on remand. And, uh, you know, that still hurts me. Yeah. 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 Do you understand what I'm saying? Of course yeah. it is. And you know that yeah. yourself, like, mm. the, the regime, again, if you're in that environment, they can only do so much. But when you hit ages of 14, 15, 16, you kind of yeah. think you're a man. But yeah. really, you, you think you know everything, but you know, fuck yeah. all. You just, yeah. it's difficult. But again, if it's your son, yeah. you're always going to be there, no matter the crime, no matter what he's done, yeah. no matter what age, if you're a loving father yeah. and a deprived heir, it can be difficult. Because my parents were to give, they just tried to give us the best, mate. Survive. They didn't want us, they weren't like a typical mm -hmm. criminal parent family, mate. My, there weren't parents that encouraged crime. Yeah. Some people go, my son will never do it. My mum was like, and my dad were like proper. They wanted you proper. Grow up the right way. Do you understand what I mean? Installing models, aren't you? So we just trod on their hearts, basically. Yeah. Not my sister. It's me and my older brother, more Brian, have just literally like, you know, we've just, we was just like mm -hmm. at it. Not out to hurt them, but... You know, that's us, you know. So what when I mean? you get out of the detention centre fifteen, sixteen, was that then your yeah. life starting to spiral? Yeah, definitely. Hundred percent, yeah. I noticed more girls were really interested when you done a like you went away and then like I noticed girls were starting to take a lot more attention of, of you if you've been in trouble kind of thing. The bad boy. Yeah, and I thought, fucking this is brilliant. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, honestly, yeah, I did. Causing more trouble because it's getting yeah, the attention. Yeah, and I thought like Kelly's girls love it. You got yeah. me, and then um, I know it's just like, don't and please don't do it for these girls. Because mm -hmm. half of these girls ain't no good anyway. Yeah. So I don't want any young person to mm -hmm. see me saying this as if it's gonna. Yeah. But at that legal. time, yeah. that's what you feel. At that time, I thought this ain't a bad old bit of game. Yeah, you do a bit of time, come out. I'm like a film star. Yeah, and then I was just um, game with this girl, and then game with this girl, and. Uh, yeah, and then I wanted to learn more about addiction, it was like a sexual thing. I wanted to learn more. Another part of my life where, I, you know, I was taken in by, I don't really want to, like, the other tries these women, so I'm just going to call it, let's say, two, two people I'm well known from years ago took me in. They was about 10 years older than me. And uh, I was underage, really, to have sex with them. And, uh, and I was like, they showed me the way the, uh, to me, was the uh, the path of the like the of every education to do with sex in one night. Mm -hmm. So I was like, now I wanted to put this to work. So it fed another addiction into messing up crime and then going with more girls. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just shows you how easy men yeah. are manipulated. Are yeah, they think sex and attention and yeah. being a bad boy is yeah. the right path. And there is a point where you do think it's normal. You yeah. think it's okay, but obviously the more mistakes you make through life, yeah. the people you yeah. see dying off, the people you see going to prison, the people you see not sticking by you, you realise yeah. how fucked up it is to you. Yeah, listen, it's all... <laughs> yeah. it's, listen, and then when, when I went away the second time, it was like uh, I went away again... I was at it all the time and then I went away again and uh, didn't really want to, yeah. But I think I was, from that moment, from the second time I went away to like Ballstall, it was called Ballstall then, it was called YP. It's still military training, green trousers thingy. I thought then I lost all every consent who I was, yeah. Do you know, like as a person, I started From that to lose. Innocent, shy yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah, I started to lose who I was then. You I created was angry. a character. Yeah, created a character as if I don't give a fuck. And I felt sorry for myself a lot. You got me? I felt like I, um, you know, I like my friends and my mates, and this is where I'm going to come to the part where you get wrong. And then that gang was absolutely brought, uh, breaking up through prison sentences, and girlfriends come along. I've got a girlfriend, someone else got a girlfriend. And that's the first time I learned about um, 
dealing with like your mates and, and a girlfriend. I remember being with a girlfriend and my pals, like the young boys used to go, okay, you're coming with us and then you wanted to go and see your girlfriend. So it was very hard to split the two up, yeah? Because you want to be with your mates, but you want this girl wants you to be with her. So uh, um, I always wanted to be with the uh, lads. I just loved being cam camaraderie, you know? Like, I mm -hmm. wanted to be, like, if there's a fight, I wanted to be there with them. Do you know what I mean? It's like, if I miss something, I used to be devastated. Yeah. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. Like, if I missed a fight they've had, I feel like I've let them down, I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I mean? So you created, like, a family in your mind where you yeah. basically live a ride or die mentality at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Where yeah. you've been... I wouldn't say the loner kid, but spending your time in your room yourself, playing yeah, with your soldiers. Definitely. Actually, when you're, that's your, your life's at your best. Yeah. When you're actually yourself. No, definitely. And then when you get into, you taste the sex or the alcohol yeah. and all the bad yeah. boys and being in prison, you're getting a bit yeah. of attention, but you're getting it from the wrong kind of people. Yeah. When, did, you, did that grow your ego then? That Definitely. You think, definitely. Yeah. But this, this is, look, it's a bit more powerful. It ain't just as easy a mon day as I'm saying there. You've got to remember, that's like early years. And then I remember, the more violence comes, the more bigger challenges are going to come in your lifetime. Because I didn't grow out to be like I was. But like I remember, uh, I always remember with my family, I wasn't never going to take a step back. I know was my brothers. So I knew, as a family, we weren't never going to... Um, you know, <clears throat> I can't speak for them two, but I know exactly what I mean. We was not in the game kind of thing, but we was on the perimeter of it, and we didn't like being told that we couldn't do something. So that's when things started changing, as I started having it more with my, uh, my other family members, and moved away from the younger group now, come out of prison, and started going into another group, yeah? And uh, started to get established, like, you know, we didn't like being told what to do, which a lot of families from that area didn't. So one thing I knew that I weren't ever going to have, I wasn't going to have, I wasn't going to let no one tell me and my family what to do. So I looked at it as if, like, the game plan changes, because now it, the violence gets serious. Yeah, you're getting, like, you're getting hurt, you're getting stabbed. Oh, I've got bore many scars of fights I've had where... You know, you're on a serious level now, mate. When you're going to bed of a night time, mate, you're thinking, I need something else. Because it's getting well like, well out of its depth now. It's got, it's got, it's got a bit more crazier. You got me? Yeah, because, Don't just the yeah. train fights and that. Now you're on a different level. So before I knew it, I went through one porthole to another, a transition without knowing I've gone through a transition. People start saying hello to you more. Then you go through a transition where all some people love you challenging all these people who think they're bad. Then you go through another transition where you're still nicking girls, girls still like you, yeah? It's all shit, yeah? These, a lot, no disrespect to some girls, but you know, you're never gonna go anywhere with some of these people, you got me? You're never gonna marry them. And then, um, um, then you go through an, that transition where people start to like you, Wee, you, you feel like you're the hero, because you're standing up for a few people. Do us a favour, can you do this fella for us? Stuck it on me, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Bang, bang, involved. Don't worry, I'll sort it, I'll sort it. Then you go through the next transition is, which this is what give me a lot of mental problem stuff. People start hating on you. You've done everything for them. But let me tell this, what I like young people to feel. You, then you're going to start getting hated through jealousy. Because people even watch, people watch, everyone who can't, people will build you up. And then when you get, and all of a sudden, they want to build you back down again. Whether you see Mike Tyson do it, where he's the king of the world champions, when he got beat by Buster Douglas. I'll never forget even that image. When I see his gum shield fall out of the floor and I see this crowd running up to the ring screaming, I thought, that's just how I feel. They was hysterical. That he, they went, King Kong is there. And he's, got, he's trying to pick his gum shield. Do you know him against Buster yeah, Douglas? Yeah. And this woman ran to the camera screaming. I was like, wow. You got me? Because that's how I felt. Mm -hmm. So then I started getting a lot more... Um, I was starting to get a real deep thinker, really, which is sad because I started to look at people in a, in a very different light. I knew when people were trying to manipulate... I was watching people be nasty, so I thought someone was a really nice fella. 
then when you get away, they go, with your girlfriend or do it? And then you ask, went away for six years after that and I started thinking, fucking, you know, I started feeling a, a bit hurtful about people. You got me using me, yeah? Like, do you understand what I'm saying, yeah. James? Started feeling like, even now, I still feel it. And I can't stand it. I see it still today. People go, oh, he's a lovely fella. It's called blowing smoke up their asses for their own needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. yeah so I, you've seen that at an early age as well? So, still seeing it. Still yeah. see it day, yeah. daily now. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Like, as I How's that be, fuck with your paranoia then, Tony? Bad, because I feel worthless. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I ain't worthless. But you know what I mean? I feel like, it's like, People like me, people in this world have liked me sometimes when the games get good. Then when I turn, they want to go, car, he's off key, car, mate, he's on my case. Yeah, but you, if you, you want to use someone, that they want to use you out there. This is to all people out there. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it to everyone today, even the young people. There's some good people out there. I've had good people look after me. That's why I'm still here now, like good people who have actually been in, like, you know, have actually want me to do well for myself. Then you get these people that just do not give a shit about how long you've done, about people who love you. They don't give a shit. But they call you, they go, hello, come and say hello to Uncle so-and-so, so-and-so. They're not your uncle. They're yeah. not the kids' uncles. Yeah. Is that just to, to say that you're their friend? To say yeah, Uncle yeah. Tony? Bullshit. Yeah, bullshit. You should not sit in front of that camera. No, I'm not up of passion. Mm -hmm. They all know what I'm on about people yeah. if they watch this ever I don't know mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit there and get aggressive because I deserve like a little bit of ending now yeah do you understand what I'm saying yeah this James? is why you're here you want closure yeah. you want to move on and yeah. you want to start afresh with your life yeah, yeah. you are the creator yeah. brother you are yeah you and that's, can, that's not me being ego yeah. so on the camera I can look at it meaning yeah, like yeah. as in like mm -hmm. you know I owe no one nothing no more I don't owe anyone nothing no more it's just the people who I... There's, oh, there's an old saying, is don't get even with those who hurt you, get even with those who love you. Mm. That's a great saying. Kill them with success. Yes, yeah, because... Yeah. Exactly. Because I'm mm. allowed to have a bit of life. Mm. And, I, and I'm hurting again now, thinking some people, you know, this, I don't mind not helping anyone who could have a problem with their self or their family. Of course I don't mind. I'm talking about people wanting to use you for violence. Yeah, that's not is that friends. really a friend? Yeah, that's not your to friends. take to come and ask you. I've had people that I would go I've, that I'd, if I asked to help them, they'd still sorry me. They'd still ask, they'd still say no because yeah. I, I I love them for my art, mm -hmm. and I'd still battle to not to help them. Yeah, but, uh, you know but that just shows you your loyalty. Then that yeah. just shows you how then people could manipulate the situation because they know yeah. how genuine yeah. you are and there it is yeah. no matter how yeah. tough you are there's still yeah. a softness there and yeah. a sensitivity where yeah. you can still see the emotions in your yeah. eyes even speaking about it you're trying exactly. to hold it together yeah. to realise all those years a lot of people did use you but you would have met a lot of good people yeah. going through because I feel angry like, well. I can still feel angry now sitting here about it mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah I, I can still feel I still feel that anger now sitting here mm -hmm. but I don't you know yeah, it's quite dumb me saying that now because I still feel angry. You know, a bit emotional right now that it's still people that still fucking want me to charge, lead the march. You know yeah. I mean? But it's done. Yeah. It's all done, mate. Mm -hmm. It's finished. Fair play to you for yeah, that. Yeah, finished. No, seriously, yeah. it's finished. It's mm -hmm. done. I don't want no one coming and see me yeah. no more for any help. Yeah. So getting help. What did uh, you do your sex for, Tony? Uh, I was in, uh, I was looking after some uh, premises, um, Back in the east end of London, and um, listen, it was a raving, raving sniffing coke then. Like I've gone for transition to a like party now. I'm talking about ants, I'm not talking about little bits. Never was going to be a criminal. Listen, I could have had everything perhaps, yeah, but my heart weren't in it to win it. Because if you understand where we're going from, I don't want to lose where we're coming from, you can keep track where I'm coming from. Do you understand what I mean? Is I've been just a like, uh, just someone fighting a cause, don't even know what cause he's fighting. I'm here, pillars of post, I'm fighting this one to that one, week in, week out. Yeah, I eat a geezer one minute, I'm up a bar bang, yeah, another geezer I'm getting talked about. Yeah, do you hear about him? Oh, mate, he went crash, crash. Done three people here, four at a time here, yeah. So I was in a restaurant once, and I uh, was in this restaurant, got on with the owners. It weren't like a protection racket, I didn't throw chairs through the fucking window, like. Play thing thing or nothing like that. I was just 
obviously these people like me, but what they didn't realise when they took me on, I was a, I was, a, I was a, my brain uh, was a mess, like a complete mess. Because before that, sorry, I can't jump back. Okay, I was with yeah. a, um, I met a, uh, a young lady who put a bit of investment into me, you know, and um, uh, she likes just met her off the off chance, put a little bit of investment in me. Uh, another addiction for, wow, you know, this person could save me from, you know, you could only save yourself, you learn. No one mm. saves you, no one. And uh, I went all right for about six months, lied to myself, thought, yeah, I fancy a bit of change here, but I uh, I was no good to no one, to be fair. Best thing any woman have ever done was get a million miles away from me because I couldn't, I couldn't sit down and watch telly like anyone else. Uh, I'd have to go into the bathroom and have a line of coke while I'm sitting watching Coronation Street because I didn't know how to sit still or even watch a programme because my head was completely shattered with like, every day thinking about violence. Oh, but I've got a row with him or I might have to have a row with him. This is how it was. Mm -hmm. So very rare I ever switched off. And I went to this restaurant this one night and um, finished this relationship. And uh, uh, a fella come in um, was quite saucy, like, you know, having a pop at the uh, waiter, calling him by a foreign name and that. And um, I said something to him and he said something back. But he pulled a knife out of me, yeah. But it ain't no ego, I just didn't feel nothing. I didn't feel scared, I was just more angry, like, that he made the m move first. And I thought, I went, no, no problem. I sat there, we looked at each other, I thought, no problem at all. I went, calm down, yeah. Oh, all right, he sat down, he, and I watched him not lick his lips, he felt good about, you know, confronted me a little bit. And I went out of the kitchen and uh, got a knife, come back in the shirt, and then I went, listen, I'm going now, shake hands, and then I, I stabbed him and then, uh, nearly killed the poor man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I remember um, it was horrific. I looked in his eyes and it was quite a severe stabbing. And, uh, you know, if I look back now, I sometimes look about a lot of my life, I think, must have, mate, you must have... Do you know, sometimes people don't... You can talk about it, like, there's no sensitivity of it years ago. Now I look back now, I think, you're fucking madman. You're like a lunatic. Mm -hmm. It's not good. Yeah. Do you understand That just me? shows you how vulnerable you must have been at the time and yeah. everybody, and I always repeat myself on this, people, yeah. the, the, the ego's been dented, the guy's pulled a blade out of you and you're thinking, you yeah. cheeky cunt, but, yeah. and then you've went and got a blade and you've you've done because the exact same. you're not a lad, I wasn't a lad, I believe I was, I was a lad, today I'm a lad to do what I want, mm -hmm. but I felt I wasn't a lad, I'm not a lad, oh, there was people there who knew me, so I thought, you now got to do something, because it's the reputation that you've created bullshit. in your mind, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I want to leave it, but I can't because people go, that's a liberty. Yeah. And all mumbling, I'm thinking, wow, man, now I've really got to do something. I can't just threaten back your your ship of cannons and I'll go, all right, James English, mine's here as well. That's not good enough. They want to see something. Yeah. Yeah. They want to see an action for a threat. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's not that's not their doing. They didn't fall. That's me. They're my actions. So it doesn't matter what people made me feel. I uh, I felt I always had to end the product. You understand mm -hmm. me? Yeah. Always had to end it. Always, always, always. Mm -hmm. Cannot walk away from it. Yeah. But that's how sick the, is that for me? Sad, that is the sad that's thing. Heartbreak. That, Listen, yeah. I'm not joking, mate. Yeah. That that kills me still mm. today I would have had a better life but there's been some there's a there's a good friend of mine been in my life for years he said to me never forget he went it's your turn come off the fucking stage now mate yeah come off the stage you're always on the stage come off mm. and um, this person gonna be great advice and um, you know he, oh, from time to time he's always giving me some great advice and I'm starting to listen to it you got me because I sit here and a, and a, a painful, painful, wow, oh, do you know what? It's fucking, like, I feel sometimes like, how did I not have the power to say no to all these people years ago? Why have I got to go and help them all? When have they ever give a fuck? 
Some have, when I've been to prison. When have anyone else give a fuck when I'm in prison? Yeah? Do you understand what I'm saying? Of course I do. When my mum suffers, mm -hmm. when another family suffers who get hurt. Yeah? Because mm -hmm. that person, usually the middle person, listen, end of the day, my actions. No one forces you to stab someone. No one forces That's me. But these people don't care about them people who are hurt, the other side, and they don't care about the side that are get, that hurt. On my side, do you understand mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Am I making sense? Yeah, yeah? of course, yeah. yeah. So it just Am shows you, yeah, yeah, because yeah. Um, it's the people who are the, watching to understand yeah. that you yeah. are in that place where you are willing to kill someone because you are more well, listen, thinking about what other people would I'm think not about you. Charlie Big yeah. yeah, no, 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 I'll tell you, like, yeah, I was yeah. ready to die for people. Mm -hmm. I used to say I'd die for you, and I heard a lot of people say die for me, but you never, yeah. And I've seen you run away from me when I'm nearly getting stabbed up and done. You got me, so. But people have utilised yeah. your loyalty then as yeah. as a weakness to get in with you because yeah. you're willing to do a life yeah. and you're willing to kill. Yeah. You're willing to yeah. put your own life in the line yeah. for people who don't give a for fuck me about to, you. For me to sit on here in an interview today, and there's a lot of people who know me, me to come here and see you today is a breath of fucking fresh air for me. Do you understand me? Because mm -hmm. I've got a great team behind me now, probation team. I've got some good people still in my life. And... Oh, oh, I'm entitled to some happiness at least, surely. Whether I've done some, I've done a lot of bad things to people, and I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry for like, you know, because in the world, some of these people make us desensitised of what we do, and it's only as you get older, you're gonna have to learn to like. I think there's every time in a man's life. Don't get me wrong, I'm still entrenched in a rule. I don't like wrongs. I don't like grasses, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't like sex offenders. I don't. I ain't gonna lie about that. I don't like, I'm still a man that I won't give someone up. Never make a statement, I wouldn't. Cause that's my rule, that ain't a, a criminal rule, that's just my rule. But lots of people have given me up. <laughs> Some of these rules that are written, I've been given up a lot. So it's very hurtful for me to lie over the years I've always stayed staunch and always will be staunch to the day I disappear, I'm staunch as they come. Because that's my, just my thing, you know? I just don't feel like, if you want to get in... There's men today involved in all this stuff, yeah? They want to run with it. And when they're going to get caught, they want to pass it on to someone else. I find that really bad. Do you understand me? Yeah. And that's the world I started to watch around me that's turned this fucking upside down. You got me? Mm -hmm. So like James English, say you was, for instance, was my pal, but you go over on someone, they get 15 fucking years, you still run wild because you're the money man. People go, yeah, but you never grasped me. I, ain't done. I thought, wow, where's the, where's it all changed out here? There's a loyalty. So it's a load of bullshit. There is some people with great loyalty to your heart there. If you've got more than five people, I say, that is, or 10 at least loyal to you, if you've got 10 people that are die for you, then you're some sign of silly C-U-N-T. Because you're, there's only probably about three that would give their self fully to you to help you out. I know about I four that, in my life yeah. that would help me mm -hmm. out and I would help them out. Mm -hmm. like, you know, I'd give my life to their kids and I'd help, yeah. you know, understand me and their families because they've looked after me. I've, I've come home and their support, these great people mm -hmm. looked after me. How old yeah. were you, Tony, when you stabbed the boy in the restaurant? Uh, 23. So still a young boy to have all that pressure that you think yeah. you had to do something. Yeah. So when you nearly killed the man, what were you thinking when you'd left? Um, do you know what? After him, after uh, after that incident, uh, nothing. I went and, I went and sniffed cocaine. I uh, went with some girl and uh, slept on a night. She was panicking. I thought, what the fuck is she panicking about? That's how lost I was. I was touched because she's seen the incident. They uh, wrapped the place up, uh, cleaned it all up, threw him outside. I was more interested in me just not getting nicked. I drove round to see if he was dead or not in a car. You know, because it was life-threatening injuries. And then there, uh, after that, it was another incident. Uh, a police officer, uh, police officers and a flying squad member come through my mum's door with me. I didn't live there. And uh, this is, it's just mad, James. And I think back now, it's just, you're gonna, it's madness. And uh, 
they come to my mum's house. I didn't live there, so I had the hump. So they arrested me or something, forget. So my dad was getting up for work in the morning. looked tired. My mum was in a dressing gown, usual scene, blue lights. I went, I don't live here, yeah? So I'm coming in the house because you're in the wrong house. So said, calm down, Tony, because the police know at that time, they was getting a bit... I was a bit of a loose cannon, mate, even with them. Yeah, they weren't pulling me up without a, a lot of a lot of them, yeah? Because, so this officer at the time knows who he is to this day, probably, like, you know. He said to me, he said to my dad, have you done a bit of boxing? Which I found a bit of an insult. He went, because your nose looks flat, yeah? So I looked at my dad's side on the stairs and I went to my dad, don't worry, because I was handcuffed and all the bobbies were in the room. They found some empty tickets of cocaine, like empty, yeah? Because at that time, they wouldn't have been filled with me with my behaviour. But it was just empty to like get some the next day, move on, whatever. And I said, this copper, I'm going to do you tomorrow, yeah? And my Scottish pal was like, with uh, next day I met him. I said, no, that's it. I said, I'm going to do you tomorrow. He went, yeah, really? Who do you think you are? Because I went, I am. Because I felt like I was hurting because my mum and dad were up again late at night, through the door, searching everything, yeah? I took that personal, do you know what I mean? I said to him, I'm going to do you tomorrow. I'm coming out, dad. And I looked at him, I went, I'm going to do you. I said, if not, we get in the van now. I'll have these handcuffs on. I said, I hear you're ABA boxing champion for the Metropolitan Police, yeah? So he went, yeah, yeah. So what's that got to fucking do with it? I said... Well, I'll leave these on now. This is true story. I'm not here to talk ego. I said, we get in the van now, win or lose, I know I'm going to do you in the back of the van or in the cell. I said, all these can have a fight at me after and kick the fuck out of me if they want, if you lose. So he's gone, who do you think you are? Next day I got Bell, my Scottish mate, I won't name him for certain reasons, comes and sees me, come outside West Ham uh, Police Station, they're on me as soon as I come down the steps, just want to search her again. But my friends just give me some cocaine but I had a little thing in my pocket where I'd sling it round it was hidden yeah so I slipped that round for that's secure as they pat me down gone past that they're looking thinking right because they know I like a supply to party again so I mean Scottish mate he's, he, we're walking along the road I went I've got a phone call as on the mobile walking along and uh, my brother said you ain't gonna guess who's in here yeah I went who's that he said the other fella the old Bill and um as we walked in, I said, I looked over and uh, you know, I looked back, I just can't believe I've done this. I looked over now, what man knows? Every man don't like a prison sentence. No, no man loves, would do anything not to go to prison. I thought it's worth my prison to go and get him. So anyway, I go to the toilet and I'm not saying it's big because I don't want to give the wrong message. I'm saying how crazy it is. So let's not please think that I'm building this up as an ego thing. I'm saying how mixed up I was. So I go to the toilet, have a line of cocaine, walk round to him, I go, right this, I go, yeah, you all right? He goes, you're in enough trouble you want for a stabbing in a thingy. I went, oh yeah. Absolutely annihilated him, yeah. And uh, they was, they, listen, they was going to kill us when they got us. Like, they was literally like, like searching boots, Carl. I knew, my mate had gone back to scars go. He slipped, I should have gone with him, but I stayed thinking I'd go another route, but someone grasped me up and uh, I was caught. But I took a doctor with me because otherwise they would have probably killed me, you know what I mean, at that time, because he, he had a lot of injuries. And then I went away again and I beat about five not guilties at the Old Bailey because the, 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 they said even though Mr. Isaac had done all the damages, uh, a lot of people jumped in. The, the cop said, no, but I knew he'd done the damages through my fingers. But the judge said, no, it's an affray because he's the only one here today. So looking at 15 years even then, I've reduced down to an affray. And then uh done that on remand and then got the six years for the stabbing. And then I knew I was going a bit funny. That's when I, uh, all the pain started uh, hitting me. And then I went to prison on the six year for the stabbing, sort of keep you out of all the violence. Yeah. But... Then I was stabbing the uh, sex offenders, bashing them, putting bread on the cameras in prison. I used to get bread on a stick, put them up, and the prison officers go, he's one, bad one. Yeah? Like a child, done a child in a, um, uh, a stable, advertised for a stable or something. Girl, she got down and he raped her. I couldn't live with it. But it always, all the prison used to come to me, yet again. Getting this used. was a, a common occurrence that I 
thought, why don't someone else do this for a change, yeah? Because I was ruthless. I'm not just hurting a prisoner. I've got a prisoner crawling on his chest, nearly getting it, like with a balaclava on. I've got my own squat team in there. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So, like, any young kid now, what I'm trying to say is now, don't, fuck, don't get in that predicament what I've been in, where you're gonna, your life's getting planned out for you, yeah? Because there ain't no one to blame than yourself. You, there is a way out. If someone would give me a way out years ago, sometimes I'll sit there now and I'm a man's man. And I've, I've had tears in my eyes sometimes. Not tears, not sobbing, but I think, what the fuck is this all about? When does it stop? Do you understand me? Yeah? And it ain't no... Gl- gl- when you come out of the prison centres, there ain't no beautiful sunshine, no music playing. You have your party for the night. Yeah? <coughs> Sorry, you have all your shake your hands. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, oh, good man, mate. Yeah, come and look at this girl. Yeah. Oh, she wants a bit of you, mate. Come and meet her and you... Straight away... All what you weren't going to do, look at this bird here, she's dying to meet you, so of course she loves it. Then you're like, ego pump, hello darling, you're on the stage again. Mm-hmm. Do you understand me? Fake like a knobhead. Yeah. That's what I'd say I was, he's mm-hmm. a knobhead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What yeah. Does it, how does it yeah. make you feel thinking about all that, that you never had the power just to say no at that time? Did fucking, you know? Do you know, I don't mind me swearing, fucking mm-hmm. angry, seriously, because I ain't a mug, but I am a mug. Looking back now, do you think that? Easy, just a mug. What kind of geezer does does what I'll do, spends 28 years of your life in prison. Uh, like, whether people respect you or not, they're entirely respect me because I made it, made it through. I don't, not people who say, I've got a lot of young people who look up to me, but I don't want to be looked up to no more. Do you understand me? Because I want to help my friend's sons, even if their dads don't want to help them, I don't want them to take that path. Because if you think, like, it, when, you, when I've got older, I've learned that the world is just like, is no, there's no special cotton wool blanket to take away the, uh, do you know like Sinbad and the Golden Fleece, if there was something that could go over me to take all that away, I would, but it stays with me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Am I I'm making sense yeah, of this, yeah. this thing? Because, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I couldn't even put all my violence into a short story because it's too much. Like the ag I've had over the years pain you got me so even the screws were getting to you getting you to do people in the prison yeah prisoners everything they used to come in and go then I had a load of um, you'd get a load of white boys from the visit it was like a lot of the yardies in there was friends of mine and they'd go Tony I'm having a visit uh, Wednesday can you help me come through and then I thought I can't stop you getting robbed not everyone because everyone wants to eat so in the end, I had, I had people send their sons to me. My dad said hello. Oh, fuck your dad, ain't done nothing for me. Instead of saying that, I'll go, all right, yeah, he's safe for me. I'll get a note from the father. Please look after my son. People from Essex didn't even fucking know some people from Essex. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, you know me from Essex. I think, I don't know you. <laughs> yeah, seriously. That's, I'm always to go, they go, top man you are, tone proper. And then, but we had a drink here. No, I fucking don't. But now I've got your son, the nuisance on yeah. me case. Yeah, who owes mm-hmm. money for drugs in prison. This is how I went through. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Everybody want a piece of you. Yeah, yeah. That becomes yeah. tiring as well. Yeah, you wouldn't think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm sorry to swear a lot. That's okay. Because yeah. what it is, I'll just get amenated because, you know, the real people who know me know know what I've been through, mate, and they care about me. It's the real people. I've got a lot of love for still some good people that actually really care for me. And if I get in trouble now, they'd still tell me mm-hmm. off. You got me? Did you, they, know, yeah. Yeah, Did you know that time, Tony, that... You were fucking losing your shit. That you were lost the shit. Lost the lost the shit. Drug lost fuel, it. alcohol. Lost it. Anger, frustration. It. What do you yeah. think you were angry at? You sell. You were letting yourself down, or your parents, or everything. Do you know, do you know what? Someone could say something to me at bar, and I, if I if it happened, I could have gone whoop, 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 and, it, and, it, and I wouldn't stop. That was me. Do you understand me? Mm-hmm. Literally, could not be stopped. Unless you f- fucking put a grenade. Like, do you know what? I was just, the, the hurt in me, I knew I was getting used, but I just couldn't say no. Were you getting a buzz from it as well, though? Was it nah. an adrenaline kick or anything? No, 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 no. I was quite sad after. After a while of violence, I used to get quite sad about it because my hands would be sore. This One man once said that he'd have up to two fights a week sometimes, two fights a week, three fights a week, you know. And I, I, you know, and then this ain't from out going through all the cut system yet. 
So my life's long. I could sit here with you probably for seven hours because mm-hmm. I'm trying to shorten it down because it's long even for child and like, but I'm trying to break it down into the best way I can to, you know, yeah. get it done with you. What did you, you know? do after your six then? Uh, come out. I sniffed gear and fell through the prison system. This, we was at a prison called Blundiston. And uh, I think you had Jamie on who would tell you about this prison. It was, we, it was out of control, really. No disrespect to the staff there. There was... It was, it was listen, it was heavy duty, mate. Yeah, play football on a Sunday. I used to put uh, metal studs in, in, scrape them sharp, jump up in the air, you tackle someone in the face. I mean, it was just, it was a prison that run on the edge, full of drugs. Um, it weren't no um, changing you there. We was uh, training. There was steroids. I'm talking about more coke on the street sometimes I probably puffed than there was we was partying on ecstasy raves I mean Reggie Cray was in shock one day I remember him looking and we had sheets up on the spur with music all plugged in and we was all dancing like literally <laughs> four or five of these pumping away and sniffing and I, I remember saying to um, Reggie Cray once do you want a line yeah him and I had one of that off Frank Sinatra in the 60s. I went, Do you want another one? He went, Oh, no, not for me. He was like, he was in amazement how this generation had become like, it wasn't just me. It was a, mate, people was getting fucking weighed in in there, mate. People was getting armed robberies. I used to go to cells there if we run out of stuff. I, I was just living for the drug, the drink. I just wanted to, I think I'd get my mind out of there. So in this prison system now, we'd go on another wing put ballys on, run up the stairs, yeah, get your gear, get your gear, yeah, we'd be, um, we'd have these people uh, uh, bent over, getting their gear, like putting their hands up against the wall, getting their parcel out, then we'd go and party. This was in a jail. What? No, I swear, yeah, I, no, I could write no, a book on it. Mad. You would never believe mm-hmm. the story of this place. No one can tell it, like, like I can tell you it, mate. What neck was this? Blundiston Jail. Was that an open? Was that an open? No, nah, it was a high security category B. Yeah. How, yeah. You think that would be more than lockdown? There were no lockdown, mate. I wanted to get a wrap once, a Coke. It was on the B-Wing at the time. I'll never forget it. I wanted it because it was Friday and I'll run out of Coke. The boys were all puffing. I was going to get high. Yeah, I was in the gym. I'd, they said I couldn't have a punch bag, yeah? I had a punch bag hanging up on the landing, yeah? I went, it is. They said, you can't really have that. Bum, bum, bum. We was trained. It was like a fight club. Then some people put cushions around their head just for a bag of heroin, yeah? Because no one want to spar each other because we're all, all infused on steroids, like people from... We had a wing from all London, all different parts of London. Essex was a lad in... Like, so it was Essex, London. Uh, and then you had the Scottish boys over on there, but were friends with us. So you had all the Glasgow lot. So there was a lot of trading going on with Vooch. They was the brewers of the... Uh, mate, the Nick was mad. Then you had an heroin wing, Tamazi Pan wing... This, and then you had Bond Street. When I first turned up there, the prison's officer, he said, that's where you get all your drugs. All oh, down there, I thought, yeah, is he fucking mad, this geezer? I couldn't believe it. I thought he's getting me at it. He said, if whatever you want, go down that road corridor, <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> yeah, so no, this is straight. <laughs> so I wanted this gear. My mate said, Tone, it's fucking eight o'clock. I went, shouted across to the other wing. I went, you're fucking out of order. I'll give you some coke last week. You'll fucking see you into. That's how bad I was. This mm. kid's going, time, mate, the morning, yeah? They don't, because everyone was like, it's going to be gone. I've got a magazine. I said, right, well, where are you going, Tone? I went, open the fucking gate, yeah? He said, why is that? I said, because I want to go and get my magazine. He went, but Tone, it's roll check. I went, I want to go and get my magazine. Anyway, he's opened the gate. I'm on camera, on my own, walking to the other side of the jail, Bang on their gate. He comes down and goes to... I went, give me fucking the thing, yeah? We're partying over here and all. And then I walk back with a big fucking envelope of cocaine and party, yeah. And the screws let that happen? Is that because you were so violent? Yeah. I, had so much, I had so much ease and drugs in here and, was, and, the, and the boys one night, I had a blackout. I was in, in there and all of a sudden I stood up and someone gave me a joint. I was reading a fucking book. And I thought, I couldn't breathe. And it was electronic system, door opening. I pressed to go out. And as I went to get out, I just went crack. Like, fuck me nose, broke me nose. So I hit the floor. And uh, I was on the land. I crawled out and everyone was nearly writing to get the screws to come up. 
and uh, the doctor just come up and he, after they said, what's well, he had a heart attack? I was saying, they went, no, he really ain't. He said, just too much partying. And I had a spliff burn right across my chest. Yeah, well, the spliff was just burnt. People used to walk around, officers, we used to be wired up to the electric and um, joints <laughs> in the ashtray. It weren't the office, listen, it weren't what we took the pit. It just, listen, we go to this governor at the time. So I need an home leave, yeah. Yeah, you got me, I need an home leave. You go, yeah, all right. You're like putting it on him to get you out for three days. You got me? Hmm. It's just... That's mental. I swear so, to God, so I come out after that six years, I come out, I knew I was in trouble because I was gone. I've been lock, lock, locking yourself away with high tens of drugs and partying like that in an environment of enclosure and violence. I've come out within about 24 hours the geezer I had um, an altercation with, I've got a couple of miles, scars with, I bashed them before I went in. So when I come out, I was like, then I've got another, I've got another tearier up. So reputations perceived me from there now. Yeah. Now I've become a man, not a boy. So now I want some scores to settle. So instead of coming out and thinking, let's have a better life or quality, or even if you're going to be a criminal tone, go and nick some money. Nah, I'll just like to have a war. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Violence. So do you, do you, our point yeah. is, if, if anyone watches this and thinks, if that's your path like I am now, then you've got to be fucking mad and you're going to throw the rest of your life away. Because my only point was, was fighting and mm. violence and, and, and settling scores. What were, you, what were you running from, Tony? What was you hiding from? Your own method of thinking? What was making you become this violent character? Even the youthful you know what I'm going to say to you? Yeah. I don't care how soppy it sounds. I, I swear to God, this is something I will, I will choose to sh uh, share with you, but I, I don't really want to, is I just want it to be accepted by someone, someone to love me generally. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Someone to love me as a pal, boyfriend, girlfriend, friend, uh, family member. Someone to love me for who I am, yeah? Well, instead of like letting me down all the time you know like mm -hmm. I'll give you something more and then you go and hurt me betray me yeah because a lot of people have betrayed me you know it like hurts me you know but I should move on from them yeah fuck but them but it seemed like from now on I was waiting I always used to say it'll only be a matter of time before anyone hurts me or betrays me so I find it very listen there's close, someone close to me very now as we speak, you know who knows that you know yeah? and uh, knows that they've gone through hell and back to win my to win my uh, affection, like years, mate. years, and win to know that I oh, know they've got my back. Oh, mm. I wanted someone to say, I've got your fucking back. Not through violence, not through crime. It's someone to care for me and put their arm around me, go, everything's going to be all right. Is that too much to ask? Mm -hmm. That's what That's what you don't get in that shit world. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you, you get some, listen, there's some good, listen, I've had some good, don't get me wrong, there's some, you know, if, a man that's looked after me for years, lovely guy, some father friends that looked after me. There's some good people on here, I want to say, who've helped me change my life and wanted me to change for the better. Mm -hmm. They know who they are, good people, and it uh, makes me emotional because they're good, good people. And uh, do you know, they've been in a bit of school they years ago, whether they ain't or not, some are just normal people, but they want good for me. Mm -hmm. They're the people I respect. Not the people want me to just go and have a roll. Yeah, why does it make you so emotional thinking about the people who do give, give you love? Do you feel as if you deserve it? Uh, because when you talk nah, about... No, nah, no, I don't think I do. Because I just think I think I've been a bit of a failure. Do you know what I mean? Just, I really do. I don't know, when people big me up, I think, what are you bigging me up for, mate? You know, I always say, like, to young geezer, go to home, I heard you had a fight with this one, I go, listen, lads, honestly... I say, do something. Just do something else. Because it's going to end up shit. Yeah, because you're respected yeah. from the youth and the old school and yeah. now you're here thinking you don't want people and looking I up to you for when the wrong say, reasons. When I see them and that and I feel sad for them and they go, I know some boys are going to be judging me now I think, time, but we like you. I said, yeah, I know you like but like me for me but don't like me for all the ag. Don't like me for all the violence. Because I've changed a lot of young boys' lives in prison. Some have become boxers, you know, like I told you about. Yeah. And I'm very proud of that. That's the boy, like the boy I trained to box, and he, he got out there and he fought for fucking like high stage of boxing. Yeah, they're the things you should do. Mm -hmm. you know, Does that make dream. you feel happy, Tony, that training oh, kids listen, and doing good listen, into the world? This kid who boxed, 
which you'll get to know if you want to get down. He said to me once, how comes you tell me so much uh, good stuff about, why ain't you done it? I said, because I, I wish someone would have told me that. And, uh, you know, like, sometimes don't glorify. I said, because there's some proper tough men out there. I said, but there's probably, no, out of 100% tough men out there, yeah, you're going to find 50%, 60% of them are rat, rats, nasty people are only going to take for what they want. Do you understand me out of you or your wife? Or when you go to prison, they want to go and get your wife. They want to go mm. and sleep with your missus. That's what they're all about. Yeah. You know what I mean? But somebody yeah. probably would have told you, your dad would have probably told you, but you were at that stage, yeah. you wouldn't have listened, Tony. No. Nah. You were so f fueled with. Do you know what? I never listened. Yeah. Do you know, I, had, I was going to a pub years ago and then there were some older criminals and that. Let's go, you've got to slow down, boy. Let's go, no, fuck off, slow down. I used to say to them, you slow down. And then I even learnt with people. I used to watch people I used to look up to. As I was getting older, I thought, he had it stuck on him then. He didn't bring one of them back, and he didn't bring one of them back. So there's a chink in his armour. Because remember, I'm not a big man. Some of these men were really big, like hands like shovels. So I thought, the, the way of war, combat, is like, to me, the most ruthless you are, is going to make you get that. Like, you know, no one's... Like, people think twice. There is some people that, oh, of course they match you and they match you with fire with fire. But some of these I used to look at were pretenders because they go, yeah, they might carry a gun, but they're never going to fire it. They might carry a knife. They're never going to use it, yeah? Or if they do use it, it's by accident, yeah? So I even learned how when there was a lot of um, uh, different sections of groups of criminals, I'd go with this like young boys, when I was growing up, it was different areas of young boys. So I'd go to the leader, even though I knew them two didn't like me, I'd go to the leader, make acquaintance with him. It's like Art of War. I would pick a book up once called The Art of War. I've always fucking knew it. I knew it before I read the page. Because it's a shame that I, I got in that well so entrenched that I'd go move to the leader of that kind of firm, get with him and then get my revenge on the two, make such a good power out of him and friendship that now I've got these two to deal with and he ain't going to protect them no more. Do you understand? I infiltrated. Manipulated. Yeah, manipulated, infiltrated. So everywhere I went, I'll go wherever I want to go. Mm -hmm. You got me? Yeah. So we are bang yeah. on the ball with mainly yeah. the, the tactics, so you, yeah, the calculations. You, so sitting here now, Joe, you imagine being in here, looking at all that. Imagine the years, that's just a tiny touch. Mm -hmm. But like I talked to, I've got a good probation team now and a good backup team, and now I'm just starting to get a bit of help, mate. How well are you coming on here telling your story today, the probation team? Yeah, good. I told them first because um, you know, uh, I've been mucking around. I'm not mucking around for a year. I've just been floating in. Like right? it's not down to it. I've got, I've had two probation, three probation officers, and they've been saying to me, "Tom, we're waiting for you, mate." Because I'm thinking I'm going along and I'm waiting for it to get me off. You know, we're waiting, we're waiting, to, we're waiting for you to start speaking, mate, because you're not. Mm -hmm. You're going through the motions. Yeah, but it's understandable spending so much time in prison, Tony, to yeah. then come into a fast-paced mm. society and try mm. to figure it out, who mm. to trust, what you want to do with your life. Yeah. But you're here, you're putting your story here yeah. to get some closure, mm. flip the chapter yeah. and write well, a, I, I a new story. I think, does James understand what I'm going yeah. on with here? Because he's that I do mad. understand, yeah. Because he's that... Yeah, it's I fucked up, yeah. I can't... Like, yeah. That's why I said I'm going to do a book, because it has to come out in, in stages, because it's so mm. fucked up. Yeah. My life, I've put it on a video now, you'll probably bang your head out that window and spew up. Because mm -hmm. it's that <laughs> fucking mental. Do you understand yeah. what I mean? There's yeah. coke, there's mm -hmm. ease, there's, yeah. psh, there's party, there's madness. Yeah. It's like foot down to the ground, mm -hmm. non-stop. Yeah. Yami, you know who you met, Yami, who's been on, who's <laughs> trying to change his life. So shout out to Yami. He's yeah, doing his Yami, videos, yeah. spent yeah. 40 years in prison, yeah. and now he's doing his thing. He's, yeah. he, he's finding his feet, he's finding his rhythm. Yeah. He told me a story when you were in prison. I think a couple of people were trying to get... But Larry with him and you've... Yeah, there's a geezer, said, yeah. Yami was like, I mean, disrespect, like he, he was someone, there was a fella there and uh, I wanted to get on. I started to really, really started to get paranoid through the dispersal system. Okay, I come off the book and um, some people get jealous when you come off the cut, hey, mate. I've done 10 years on it and there's people getting jealous. There was actually a criminal, I won't mention his name was once, I've come off it, everyone, well done, Tom, like, 
give me a bit of praise, 10 years, yeah? Some people want it 20. So I come off it 10 years, he went, well, how did you go off that then, Sean? I've done like nine years on it, and I ain't murdered no one. I looked through the fence, I went, how about I smash your fucking head in, mate? Yeah? They're just so... I had a <laughs> extra gym. These are top... Some of these criminals grass you up in there. I had a gym session, extra gym session. Pete, I went to home. You, I was under 40 then. I wished I was today, but I ain't. But I was under the under 40s then. <laughs> and the gym session, I had one extra. The gym session said, Tone, sorry, mate, can't have it. I went, what are you fucking doing this to me for? I've got a long time. Give us a break. I went, hey, nice Tone. It's one of your boys, one of your own. <laughs> Seriously, bitterness, jealousy. They all know who they are, but there's some good guys in there. Mm. And I really feel for suffering. They've come out. I've got some good friends I've gone along that, that in the trenches with. You got me? Like Yammy, I've never ever thought I'd see a change in Yammy. Fucking Yammy, like... <sighs> Yammy was just someone I talked to a lot. Yeah, and he knew he used to look at me and know whether I wanted to speak or not. Because <laughs> I was like, you know, like Yammy he picked his moments for me. And I love Yammy for that. We've yeah. gone back a long way. Mm -hmm. And it's a pleasure to see some of these boys come on here. Then you get the boys who go, yeah, look at that guy going on there. Yeah, listen, we don't care anymore. Yeah, we don't care. We don't have to, there ain't no ego. We're not carrying our ego flag no more. And they're probably the same guys who'd want to come on here. But yeah. It's probably the same guys that stuck you in the cat yes. for your gym session. Exactly. Sake. Exactly. <laughs> right. That, do you know what? James, you couldn't put it better yourself. Do you understand me? That is yeah. the truth. And then uh, I come off of that and I started to feel like there's a, a little child coming to me life, like my family. Wow, that makes me emotional. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, older, about a week old. And I uh, come off the cat, he's moved. That makes me quite emotional, funny enough. Yeah, and I, I hold her in my arm and I thought to myself, this, like this, this don't over the bottle on a visit and you weren't supposed to stand up. And I said, listen, I'm standing up. And I held this little girl here. And this is what I say to these young people. When you've got these children in your life and things like that, it's like taking away people's fathers from them. I started to understand that, you know, like, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, yeah. All in love and war sometimes, yeah. Nah, mate, not for me no more. Yeah. Not me, because that little girl in my arms, I thought, I've just done 10 years, mate. I looked at her and thought, oh, I've got to be there for this little girl. You got me? And she was so sweet and I felt dirty. Never going to forget that. I thought, how dare you hold this little innocent thing in your arms, mate, because you've killed someone, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, seriously, I thought, you're a nasty bit of work, mate, yeah? Because I always believed all my actions were justified. That's how crazy I was. But there's not been one action I've done, really, that I could say has been justified. Mm -hmm. Fair comment. Yeah, definitely. Just want to know the truth. Yeah. That's what beats me mm -hmm. up today. So that was a moment for you then where you realised... Uh, life, your life can change in moments, yeah, seconds. Yeah, I mean, we didn't get to where I went away for a murder as well. Yeah, no, which we'll but, touch yeah, on yeah, now. Yeah, so the moment yeah, it really that really changed your life. Yeah, changed my life. Yeah, and uh, and I always still had people. I went to uh, Grendon then, where there was, a, there was some good staff there, but I was dealing with people half rubbing my shoulders up on purpose, mate, pushing me to the limits like grasses. Uh, nonces like people who were acting tough in there like a, a, an informer still wearing their like gang colours and things like that who have grassed all their mates up oh I don't agree with that you've given them 30 odd years 40 years sentences you've been part of that you've been a cause of that but you've took an easy route out do you understand me? Yeah. That still affects me. No loyalty no no loyalty no mm -hmm. and uh, I had sex offenders nudging me in dinner queues and that you know what I mean how did that affect you though from stabbing them inside prison and on sees the sex offenders to be there Mate. surrounded with them? Because I know a lot of people <sighs> who's went to Grendon... There, was, there no was only one, there was only a couple on my wing and I, couldn't, I found it very hard to tolerate them and make me physically, uh, you know, I, but I think on, I spoke to my friend once on the phone and I went, I can't do this no more, to my uh, mate, a uh, mate, male mate. And he went to me tell him, come on mate, you're there now mate. And, but, but listen, let me tell you what, some great staff there. I've got to big them up, mate, because let me tell you what, 
I don't know, I'm not a liar. If I sit on here with ego, it's be ego again, go, no, no one helped me. They was good. Because I lost me, uh, I lost a kid years ago and this woman helped me out there. Do you got know I me? Mean? So there, there's some good staff there, but you've got a lot of people hiding in there. Yeah? Mm. They're going there for an easy bit of time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I've looked at them on a meeting and thought, God, when you get back to normal prison, mate, you're in like, God, mm -hmm. you know. So I know a lot of people's went to Grendon and I've had no Razor Smith on the shows. No, totally no, changed. Listen, no, I absolutely love no. No and me. No found me hard work there, Arsenal. That was quite, <laughs> I was used to say to me, Tom. That's no yeah. surprise though, Tony, no, to be no, fair. No, 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 <laughs> seriously. After some of your stories. Yeah, yeah, seriously. <laughs> Noel was like, but Noel done a lot of help for me. Mm -hmm. Noel and a few others mm -hmm. and a, a scarce fella uh, there was, uh, was good. A lot of people done and they give me some nice visits there, learnt me to have a time with my family. Mm -hmm. Like my family, like, like they used to come up like, just like Lisa used to come up and that, and I used to just have a nice time and be able to talk without being on an hour and a half visit. You know, start to like have a bit of attention to me and like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, yeah, but you know, I, I didn't know where, I still had no voyage in there, mate. I don't know where mm. I was going to land. Isn't that crazy? I had some pipe dreams. Then I had these visions I wanted to go to an island in Scotland somewhere right out of the way where only I live on it. I mean, come on. It's kind you know of I mean? run, running away as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The grass yeah. isn't always green on the other side. No. Unless you sort no. your own shit out with Finn. No. So the night then, when you got your 20 before all that running, yeah. what was the procedure going up towards the, the man you killed? What was the, the day before? Uh, bad, bad. Dark, darkest place ever, to be fair. That's the, like the worst place ever in my mind before leading up to that. Yeah, really dark. Out of control, really. Was it an enemy? No, no. No, he wasn't an enemy. No. No, he was all right. He was, he was all right, mate. We was all right. Other people made us enemies, if you know what I mean. Other people in your head? Yeah, yeah, other people. Yeah, just other people made us enemies, yeah. Mm -hmm. We weren't enemies still, though. We would, we just fell out. But, um, yeah, it was sad, yeah, because other people, they, like, the, two, uh, the people who uh, like to me, like, uh, listen, as again, my actions, I'm not blaming anyone else for this, it's me, right? But, uh, yeah, I laid in bed for a long time. I had to... I had to crush that thought for a long time because they're the two men responsible, really. Even I'm responsible for my... Listen, no one told me to do that. Yeah, but it's two people got it going. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Fed the fire. Yeah? And you we were, had no qualms. Yeah. All the stories people were, they weren't the right stories. Me and him was having an all right time there and I wanted to do someone that was with him. And uh, he begged me not to and then the other geezer... Uh, got him involved and the other fella got him involved and that's all I'm going to say. And this was in 1990? 19, no, that was the six years I got in 1991. Yeah. No, 1992 I got the six years, just started mm -hmm. in 1992. And um, the murder light was just, uh, that's what I'm going to have to say, it, two pieces of shit out there really who caused him his death and caused me a life sentence. Yeah, they, look, we're all going to say, yeah, but you didn't have to do it. No, I didn't. It's my... I done it, my fucking actions, but them two men lived in my mind for a long time and I've let them go, believe me. And they're lucky I'm not really in that. I don't want nothing more to do that, but that's all right. I carried that for a long time. Mm -hmm. Do you understand me? And who was that? So, so I say to young, sorry, James, be that's careful okay. what you wish for because some of these people, they might not tell you to shoot someone, but they put a fucking gun in your hand. Do you understand what I'm saying? Manipulated. Yeah, definitely, 100%. And the other geezer on the other side, I pushed that man to come out and help him. Yeah? Yeah. There you go. If you want to do this gangster bollocks and all this fucking shit, sometimes, yeah, half of you are never going to be real ones, so don't bother, mm -hmm. because uh, I'm not nothing. I'm just a man who's been, just been absolutely thrown in the fucking deep end, made silly choices. And made silly decisions, life changing decisions. Yeah. So I ain't nobody. I ain't no legend. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I know, because yeah, Yami called me a legend. Yeah, I understand that. A legend, as in friendship. That's what he means. So don't people get Yami's good stuff. He don't mean a legend me off like I'm a bad boy and I can take on everyone because I mm -hmm. can't. You know what I mean? But as in a legend, as in a legend, I've got on with people. That's yeah. call me legend by that because I am well liked by a lot of people up north, mm -hmm. Glasgow as you say, everywhere. Because I'm a legend because I get on with people. When people get to know the real me, I'm all right. Yeah. I just don't like piss, tasers, piss takers and users. 
It's still a that lot really of affects on. you, Tony. That yeah, badly. Yeah, so it does to, to think people have took the piss and yeah, I'm you, still paranoid of it now. Yeah, of the love to find if someone loves me, I find it very hard to accept. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you're identifying with it and that's a, f- a step forward. Yeah, yeah of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when, yeah. You, when you found out you killed that man, what were you thinking then? Uh, I don't know. My mind was so fucked up. To be fair, it was, it was fucked. It was, it was gone. It was just completely gone. I must have say, if my mind... If I could think back to to that, my mind, this is a mad thing I really actually wanted to do to two people before I, went, before I left that scene, I weren't happy with the consequences. I wanted the two, the one with me and the one with the person at the time. You got me? Because mm-hmm. I think it, they jeered it up a bit. So we're not just and he, doing- he's dead. I've done life sentence. Mm-hmm. Come out and oh man, there you go. Yeah. But he's dead, so you know. And the man you killed. I'm sorry for his uh, family and that. Yeah. yeah, I've never, I've never felt like happy about it. Mm-hmm. Never felt good about it. Yeah, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That's yeah. The only these thing. what these people do. Mm-hmm. They fucking build the. It's like the train going along. They're the ones that shoveling the coal in the engine all the time. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm trying to get a message out to other people on this on your podcast now who, who are young now, saying, don't let people blow smoke up your ass. Because yeah. they're feeding your ego, mate. Yeah. Because yeah? we spoke here. And then. when you get nicked for a big serious crime, mate, let me tell you what they do. There's not a lot of men that can go in a police station, mate, now they're going to get 20 years and I think and keep stum. Because I've always kept my mouth shut and always will. But let me tell you what, there's enough men going to agree with me now. Most, there's a lot of them that'll break. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I took pride in not breaking. I thought they broke. Yeah, I ain't broke. Yeah. And I won't. And I thought, how have I been like, set up again? Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, yeah, again, the geezer didn't say do it. So you can't say the geezer's put me in the murder and got him killed. But you, they done their fair part. Do you understand yeah. me? That's what I've always been angry yeah. about. You know, if you never, they they're were... the worst people, probably out of the two of me and him are bad criminals. They're, they're the worse than us. They're the slugs and the snails, these people, you know? Mm-hmm. But, you know, no grievances with them no more. Long time ago, you know, they would have been, you know, I would have been greatly after them about like first early days of my sentence, mate. Yeah. I was unhappy about them people. Them people live your life, get on with it. I hope you've changed because I hope you ain't still causing destruction. But listening to, to your story, yeah. Tony, yeah. if you never murdered that man, it would have been someone else eventually. Yeah, definitely. Listen, it could be more than, like, you know, yeah. it's just, it's just, I was out mm-hmm. of control. Because we you spoke know, earlier and the man who you killed says, what was his last words? Yeah, uh, well, that's powerful. Um, well, I didn't think me that one, but I'll answer it because I'm a man. Yeah, good call. Yeah, because I'm not going to be a coward. Um, I, I looked into some unused evidence. He said, tell my wife and kids I love them because he was dying to me. That's mm-hmm. the first time I thought, like, fucking hell, you know? Yeah. Fair play for speaking about that, though, because yeah, yeah. that's powerful. Well, it's good for them other people to know. Yeah. Perhaps, listen, they've got older now. There ain't no grams, but yeah, I'm glad I've left that with them as well. Because that's what he said, yeah. Because anyone, yeah. for coming, you don't realise how strong you are by coming on here and telling your story. Because yeah, now you. people who are watching understand the yeah. damage it does holding a knife for a gun. Yeah. But that just shows you how fucked up you were then that thinking yeah. killing a man was, was nothing really. But no. even deep inside you knew it was wrong, but you yeah. were so fueled with drugs, you were so manipulated by yeah. other fucking criminals. Yeah. You've got to remember any drug dealer out there, there's kids as young as 10 yeah. taking drugs. You're part of that problem. Of you are. So why the fuck are they going to have loyalties exactly. for anybody else? Exactly. They don't care about fucking no, no one. No. And you've got to understand how fucked up they are in yeah. their mind. No, no, I've got a lot of friends in prison for murder. Mm. I've had yeah. family members that have been murdered. I've had family members and friends that have been involved yeah. in a murder. I've seen the destruction, yeah. not just in my own family, but other yeah. families. The ripple effect that it has right through fucking mm, lives, yeah. even the ripple effect, it still affects mm. you. I can see it yeah. in your eyes. Yeah. You can see the emotion, even speaking mm. about, no matter mm. what you speak, you can see you wear your heart on your sleeve. Yeah. You can see, you, you, you kind of guy, you'd phone up and you're there in the heartbeat, no questions yeah. asked. Yeah, definitely. That yeah. You, not everyone yeah. is like you. No. Not everyone is like you. You're no. a dime a dozen. You're 99% of other people are weak links, yeah. scared, mm. as mm. you say, break in prison, stick mm. you in because you're getting another gym yeah. session. Yeah. These people are fucked. Yeah. They ain't the people, and yet we see them with the big cars and the, the fake yeah. Rolexes and we yeah. think that's a great life. Yeah. That ain't a fucking life. 
As yeah. your prime example, that you can mm. see, yeah, you, you hate the fact that you've made those mistakes, but you can only uh, learn yeah. from them, grow mm. from them, and then yeah. maybe around speaking in schools, getting your book out to now yeah. help others. Because I know mm. you are wary coming on here today because you didn't want to promote yourself, you didn't want people no looking chance. up to you no. and thinking you know, legend. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So you're here today to to set some closure for yourself because all these podcasts we don't, like we spoke I don't sit with any questions in front of me we just shoot the shit these are like therapy sessions for mm. people so many mm. people are getting help because I know a lot of people actually in prison watch and listen and mm. they know their self that they're fucked up and a lot, a lot of yeah. good boys in prison serving life from mm. serving life good boys from Porsche where I'm from fucking mm. diamonds but they've just chose the, the path that you mm. went down they kind of yeah. get backed into a corner where they thought there was no other way out but there's always a choice there's always mm. an option mm. now you're now here man enough to say do you know what hands mm. up I fucked up I'm sorry even for that man's family for anybody mm. they might watch this what would you say to them like the man who you killed or people are watching what would you say just to, um you can't say sorry sorry ain't good enough to be fair yeah so uh, and you can't get forgiven, so there you go. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I don't say it really makes sense. It's just uh, to anyone I've fucked up, or uh, it's just uh, try and forget the eight and just pity someone who's you know, a bit of, you know, better yeah. off to pity someone like that mm-hmm. because, um, you know, you can't ask for sorry. I don't ask for sorry for people who are like, oh, forgiveness. Do you understand me? Yeah. You understand me? Yeah, of course. Just man. That, oh, all I'm going to say is I'll carry, I'll carry genuine sadness in my heart. Mm-hmm. And you can see that. You yeah. can see I'm that. Not ask, yeah. Don't say sorry for people you've just mm-hmm. got rid of or people you've hurt, mate, because, yeah. you know, you asked him a ridiculous thing, you know, I don't, you know. But this is now you're wanting to do something about it. You want to show people that you don't make the same mistakes that you've mm-hmm. done, and that's powerful. Mm-hmm. So you might have had to do 25, 26 mm-hmm. years in prison to then seeing a bit of light and going, you yeah. know what, that ain't a fucking but it, life. But it didn't, st- like saying back when Yami was there with the KA thing, there's a geezer in there, a big fella, about 20, 22 stone, it's like that. It don't end. So don't think when you get on the prison van, you go to the old Bailey and the blue light comes out and you come whizzing out of there, it's ended, mate. You get in there and then you've got more fucking egos and mental illness patients when yeah. you have a fucking fight with you, mate. Yeah? So don't think you're going in there and you're going to be a martyr and you're going to sit in your yeah. cell and everyone goes, mm-hmm. oi, oi, oh, let's so because yeah. so, there's loads of you in there, mm-hmm. loads of you waiting to grab you, mate, like hyenas. And like Yami says, I love what he says, if you ain't fucking in the game there, mate, you will get found out. And there was a big guy there, I'm sorry, I jumped on that question mm-hmm. you asked me, and he was a nasty, 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 nasty bully, always shouting out, never been defeated. I was about 12 and a half stone at the time, and uh, yet again, I'm watching him pester people, the life out of people, Billion. giving people a slap here, slaps an old data like an older man once. I don't like mentioning people's names because it's unfair and not here. He slapped an, um, uh, I don't do a Frankie Fraser's son, I said to him a slap, mate. I dug him and had a little fight and give the Fraser's um, uh, son his jury, had a go back. He was a 60 year old man, bully, yeah? So I've gone like, um, I can't, like hey, why am I be having that? So anyway, comes down to the op plate next day. This fucker's got a neck as wide as this table. I mean, if you just can't probably see that table, but his, his, his neck's like this. Oh, I just thought, nope. This is the learning. I'm trying to learn because I've had the baby. I'm on, I ain't got to the baby in my arms yet, but I still want to go out. I'm getting to the stage now. Where I've, I want to come off the uh, cat. I want to move. I want to get some... I've got some light at the end of the tunnel. Ten years in, and then I've got another... Do you know, I even had a party... Not party, like I'd have, give everyone a meal on me wing because I've done 10 years. <laughs> then once I hit the meal and I was all happy and I come off the cat, I was going, Yeah, yeah, I'm off the cat. It was all shaking hands and that. When the door shut, I thought, I've still got another fucking 10 years to, <laughs> another 10 years to do, you know what I mean? But why have I just bought everyone yeah. food? I've fucking done like 200 quid of food. I'm, I'm like, mm. but it might be a bit of a, a debate on that one, 200 quid of food. But I thought, <laughs> what are you celebrating about? You've got another yeah. decade to go. So uh-huh. anyway, this fella comes down your plate next day. So what I'm telling these youngsters, mate, there's people in there who are going to put one in you for moving their saucepan. I've seen it, burnt, hot fat, their head's completely burnt. Their eyes are gone, face is melted. It's a violent place. He's like, this fella said something to me about where I'm from, yeah? 
Yeah, yeah, I've heard about you, boy. Yeah, yeah. And he slapped this kid, Scott. He slapped this kid because he had a tracksuit that wasn't designer. I went, why don't you leave him alone, mate? Yeah? Yeah, well, 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 what's good to you, mate? I'm looking at him, I went, he's got a lot to fucking do with me, I said. I thought, oh, mate, why? Then the whole of this life, boys, who are watching this, it's on ya. There ain't no home to go to, can't jump in a cab, can't go and meet some of your friends, can't go and pull a thing out, go and plot one up. You are in a tin can, mate, yeah? There's nowhere to run, nowhere to ride. The prison life, the, the big sentences, is the most dangerous place you're ever going to go, mate. And if you're not cut out for it, stop now. Because I will tell you stories that, like even Yami told you, you will not go there. And if you are, if you ain't, if you've come out unscathed, then you've actually dug an hole and put the helmet over the top of your head. Do you know what I mean by that? You've dug a trench and you've put your tin out over the head while the bombs are all going off, while everyone's fighting. Mm. You vid. Because you can't come out there unscathed. There's a, you're going to bump into someone with their cornflakes. Go to you, yo, what's that about, mate? Disrespect. Is there people in the caties that get their head down, though, and don't get involved? Yeah, there's a, yeah sorry, just... yeah, don't get me wrong, there's a few. Mm -hmm. But there's like... As you know, everybody still try to make a name for themselves. Yeah, but this fella, I've gone on the yacht plate, Yami's uh, running a... Right, Yami's happened to be there at the right moment, right time, and what might be saying, like he always is, yeah? yeah I mean. So Yami was in there. Good luck to Yami. I'm only saying that he's a different <laughs> fella, but Yami's there. I've got Yami and I view, and I said to him, uh, he said to the hot plate something. So anyway, I said, I'll see you in a minute then. Yeah, we'll have it. Yeah, yeah, all right. So I come out of the unlock. Yeah, I've tucked my tracksuit bottoms in. Always put a vest on, so I think, right, I'm fucking having it now. I've gone up to him, I thought, let's hope this does it well, because I've just finished a very good course called Cognitive Self Change. And obviously, it was an actually a good course. <laughs> it learned my fucking thinking process. Yeah. So I thought, sweet, calm it down, nowhere to stop, cut all the emotions out, know what's driving me for the violence. Yeah, what they don't realise some courses is he ain't learned it. So unless he's learned it, it's not going to really do much, is it? Go, hold up, excuse me, stop, mm -hmm. yeah? To a very violent individual, mm -hmm. yeah? I happen to tell you, you're pushing my <laughs> buttons. No, do, do you understand me, James? He's yeah, thinking, I'm yeah. going to rip your fucking yeah. head off, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I looked up, Yami's there. He's <laughs> he's everywhere, yeah? So I see Yami in the corner, and Yami's like, oh, it's going here. Uh -huh. And I went, listen, mate, do yourself a favour. <laughs> uh, don't want to talk to you. Don't talk to me. Don't like you. You're a bully. Now he's half suffered it. Because I'm, I'm a good man in the eyes. He's lost. I'm now I've got him. But there's some good fighting people above us on the next level. There's about eight of us in that dispersals. There's a lot of us in dispersals that fight. But there's six or seven that stand right out. Yeah. They know who they are. Good fighters. Dangerous people. And uh, they're on the landing. So now I'm aware. Boom, I'll get them. They're like meaning like they're more with me than this fella then Yammy's like what well, Yam's on it yeah <laughs> well, he can't keep still Yammy he's like what's going then Yammy's thinking Tony's dead mate he's picked a fight with a heavyweight that he cannot possibly sizably manage to win yeah don't matter how many rounds he does on the bag and the big fucker's quite good on he's not a brilliant box but he's good on the bag Ooh, yeah, yeah. Like, I know he is Frankenstein. It's like they've stuck him together. Oh, so now he's looked up at him. Yeah, he's gone. He looked at me. And this ain't the glorified. This shows you what you're going to deal with when you get in there. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to say. He's then gone, don't fucking do this. What do you want to do about it? I went, let's fucking go. Now, Yami is watched him. I've run down the stairs and we're not supposed to go out, but the prison officers let it go on. I've gone out to the laundry room. I'm thinking... I'm not heavy enough, mate. I'm fucking 12 and a half stone here, mate. So I'm thinking, draw fast, got to go. Yami said, after the fight, that he took his time to come downstairs, which I knew was a good move for me, so I'm waiting for him. But he's taking his time to come down. Any man's in a rush for it, you come down fast, yeah? As he comes through the door, he pulls his tracksuit bottoms up, like the green mole. I just can't see the sunlight coming from the door. His head's that big. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, honestly, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, it's not like if you had the sound effects go, <laughs> <laughs> like in American films, oh, I've got 
fuckness. I went to my mate, keep an eye out for us. He went, Tony, I can't watch this, mate. Yeah, he went, I don't want nothing to do with him, mate. I went, he's fucked <laughs> off, yeah? Cheap, I'm on my own, yeah? So Yami's still trying to get, <laughs> Yami's getting everything. Yami is in full seat. He uh -huh. knows exactly where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. He went, I want a word for you. What this bully does, yeah, he's a, don't get me wrong, bully or not, he will kill you in jail because he cannot live with these little imperfections yeah. of the egotistic world we live in that you cannot lose. Because he always says, never been defeated, never will. So they're bad news for me, that is, yeah? Because I'm about to smash the granny out of him. And I'll tell you what I've done. I absolutely pulverised him through the art. I was so sad. As I was doing him, I thought, oh, I'm fucked now. More years, yeah? Because violence, when you're in there and all, don't think you're getting out early. Because that's... Listen, any, any incidents in there violently, your sentence, your life sentence... It's just going, oh, I've got 99 years recommendation of 20. Yeah? That can go on to 99 years in there, mate, and carry on all the way through 200. So die in there. Die in there if you want. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I smashed him to a pole. The worst thing was, when, he, when I finished him the first time, he'd come out, and sorry I used these words, but it's my word, not glorify it, because I can't stand the fucking thought of it. I'm, I'm just trying to warn anyone thinks going to prison is it's all over, because it ain't, mate. It's worse. Because I first got my life sentence, I'll skip back to that story. I got in a sweat box and I thought, <sighs> I looked out the window, the cafe, went through banks from the old bay, and I thought, wow. Like a prick, I went 31, 32, 33. I was counting my age on my fingers. Of course, I know what fucking 20 years is on from 30, it's 50. But like I did, if I counted it in shock, I went, oh, mate, let's do that again. I was counting. And, um, it's like, I was relieved. But when you get in here, everyone's laying over. This one from this area is waiting for you. This one, he's looking at you. Is he a bad guy, this guy? Is he a nice? Then when you want to try and be a good boy and you want to change, which you do, that's when you're most vulnerable. So I find it sad that it's far for most young men to change in prison. Mm -hmm. That's sad. Yeah. Because they're vulnerable. When they change, they're vulnerable. Yeah. What was it like? I was, I was yeah. quite well known in prison. I'm not scared of saying I, I stood for what I stood and everyone knows that. But you could, I even I felt vulnerable at times when I started feeling towards my family, when I started heading towards the Litlands and mm -hmm. that I started to feel like I was losing my armoury. Yeah. What was it like when you got your 20, Tony? What was that day when you got <laughs> your 20? What were you thinking? Were you numb? Uh, I just called it, I think I called the judge something and... Um, A 20 wreck? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know he handed it down. I didn't even know he handed that down to me. I weren't listening. And I was having like a lot of rows in the, in the dock with the officers threatening him and kept saying, oh, don't touch me. And uh, walking back, you ever seen the film Stir Crazy? Yeah. As you're getting it and they go, yeah, no shit, no shit, yeah. Mm -hmm. They get it sense, go, <laughs> what? I was thinking, I'm going to freak out in a minute. Yeah. Some, someone's got to plough through the mm -hmm. wall and take me away from this nightmare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're all chaining me, they're walking me fast, and I'm going like, as I'm walking, that is when you know, yeah, this one will say to everyone, I'm going to try and help, yeah, that's the most painfulest day of your life, mate, because the curtain shuts on the stage. Yeah. Do you understand me? Yeah. That's when all the victim's suffering comes, all yours, and you leave an old lot of shit behind mm -hmm. for everyone to fucking mm -hmm. deal with. So when you were going through your, your yeah. training and stuff, um, how was it like trying to get out of Cat A when you know you were coming to an end of your sentence? Was it still worse. difficult? Was there still more tests? They're worse. They brought that fella on who I'd done there, yeah? I was trying to come off the Cat A. Provocation, yeah? They moved him to my wing, knowing full well that he's got a shank, yeah? They've brought him over to my wing. Now, are you trying to reform me or are you trying to get me more life sentence? Mm -hmm. How the fuck do you win? Then you get a, a prison report. Not, listen, not all prison staff bad. Not saying all governors bad. Some fucking, I've had some good help along the way. I'm just talking about some. I don't always generalise as everyone. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Some people have literally, when I've had someone, like, like I've had staff that trying to want to really see you get out of prison in the later stages, they're trying to fire to help you. You got me? Mm -hmm. But some of them shouldn't be there because then they're writing a report on you. However, 
Mr. Argent seems to be very dangerous still. Of course I fucking do. You brought the geezer on the wing with a shank yeah. to kill me. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? Do you understand yeah. me? You're up against it, mate. Constant. You, please look at me now. Any youngs, boy. You ain't fucking never been on a ride unless you're going to go on a long ride. It's never ended, yeah. mate. Do you feel as if you've been fighting every day of your every life, Every single Tony? day. Yeah, every single day. And what yeah. was it like when you got your lib date when you got told you were getting out I didn't fucking believe it even when the pro board I went in there this is the truth I sat down and I don't even know if I've done well on this how I've come across on in this interview I hope people can understand because sometimes I can't break it down because it's too much so mm. I knew the pro board was going to ask me yeah right this is uh, when did you start I said listen can we stop this can I just tell my story I'm not going to lie about who I am what I've done yeah well Go on in. No solicitor got involved. No personal officer. He was a great man trying to get me. I had a personal officer. That actually, was so good. He wanted to get me out, mate, because he felt I've done enough. He read my file and thought, well, this geezer's just been fucking used, mate. Yeah? Is that a bad thing? He was a real good man. Yeah? Richie's name was, and he fucking, like, really f battled. He said, don't know if you ever want to go home. He thought for get me out to mm -hmm. a DCAT. Yeah? Yeah? I thought, what's he doing this for? Why is he interested in me? Yeah? But he was. Mm -hmm. Great man. Great fucking man. Seriously, great man. Mm -hmm. uh, celebrated when I got my decat. So I got there. I thought, I'm not getting out. I had a lot of trouble at home as well before that. Started cutting a few people off of me and my family. Because um, that was quite sad. Uh, you know, lost a good part of my family for a little while. Got them back now. Just went a bit funny. In the end, with all the build up to it, you got me. Uh, they said, called me back in the office, told them my story. I went anyway. At the end of the day, I said, I might as well fuck off now. That's what I said to them. That's exactly the words I use of. Oh, you ain't going to give it to me anyway. So I'll tell you my story, and I'm ready to move to another sea cat prison anyway. Walked out. They called me back in. I thought, oh, what they want? Yeah, called me back and they went, Mr. Argent, probably we hear people who go, I've been on this course, that course, and this course, and I'm a changed man. They all said to them, they said, and how would you, how do you feel today? What would you, do you still feel violent? I went, yes, I do. Every day. Yeah. Most people go, oh, you can't say that. I said it. I said, I like seeing someone every day. Mm -hmm. I said, because I've had enough of people. I said, but I don't. And I don't want them no more because of the consequences it caused, which is a true answer. Yeah. They said that was such an honest answer. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And they said, we're going to give you a decat now. Uh -huh. and I had a fucking emotion come over me then I had to wait for the stamp from the home office which uh, yet again is another six seven weeks of anxiety then when that letter come over but then I had a little dream it was going to be beautiful and birds and whistling and butterflies about nah mate your sentence starts when you come out again uh -huh. and how was it coming out for the first time in 20 years over 20 years not good no nah. Not good. Not good at all. Still battling, brother. Still battling, mate, yeah. Yeah, I say that of emotion, still battling, mm -hmm. yeah. So the last yeah. 15 months for you, how's it been? It's getting better now, yeah, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Weren't going to last. Couldn't see myself lasting, nah. Nah, could not see myself lasting, mate. Nah. All little spiritual things happened to me for a reason. I started seeing your pod show because I'm interested. I watch. Mm -hmm. I thought, what's he got to say, this fella? Who's on here? I like, I'll usually I'll go to indoors, I go to indoors and say, who's this geezer here? What's this geezer, mate? And they go, yeah, I've done show and show. <laughs> and I've done him, mate. I'll go, fuck off. I'll go, you're a wanker. You was yeah. in prison, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're on there, giving it the big one. Then I'll see some generally good people coming on from your show. And, I, and not because I'm sitting here with you. You ain't dragged me here. I'll come mm -hmm. here to you. Yeah, I've looked for you, yeah. And I went to so this man, and I'll see Yami on there. I've seen Blink. Big dart, you know what I mean? Paul Dean, and I've seen good people yeah. come on here. Bradish, Sean Bradish. I mm. know all these guys, Quincy, yeah. yeah um, what's it called? Um, uh, what's the other black guy you had on here? Uh, Leroy, Leroy Smith. Oh, Leroy. Yeah, I've seen all of them come mm. on. I thought, you know, these boys, like, fucking hell, mate. How strong are they? I had a bit of jealousy to think, how can they come on and do this? Because mm -hmm. I couldn't, but I did, and I'm here now. Proud of you. So, Big up RG's coming on here yeah. and do that. No, yeah, man, you know I mean? for yes. you coming on, brother, and fucking and, yeah. and pulling your heart out, you can see that emotion, you can see that 
yeah. you're trying to hold your shit together you can see the pain behind yeah. you I can see it I'm not going to bullshit you yeah. but for coming on and just and being open and honest and talking yeah. about the pain the misery it causes yeah. and the hurt and even though now yeah. you're still battling but you're on the right mm. path to making yeah. changes you're on the right I path so. to better yeah. your life mm. You're going to have the question marks now. You say you want loyalty and people to love you, but even when that happens, you push mm. them away. Yeah. So you do. You That's what you yeah, want. Do. There's people there who's off on you. Trust me, so I do. So it's yeah. like the abandonment issues kick in. Yeah. You don't want them to hurt you, so you'll hurt them I first. Want you kind to of fuck up. I want people who love me to fuck up. <laughs> I want you to fuck up. Yeah. yeah. I want to say, I told you so. Yeah. I knew you was going to do that to me. Yeah. Yeah, because kind of I find well, it hard it. when someone don't do it to me, <laughs> then I get paranoid. You and know, you're scared like, though that mm. your your barriers drop and people realise that you're nah. not as tough as you are when you're nah. just actually a sensitive nah. man. Nah, I wouldn't be who, on here now, yeah, because I need to help some people. If I can help any young man out there or any young woman or any mm. young girl, because everyone gains that. Listen, I ain't giving a load of ball. Listen, please listen to me, mate. I've got a lot of respect from a lot of people for the right reasons, but. Don't respect me for the ag. Mm-hmm. You got me? Don't respect me. Because I've helped a lot of people out in, uh, uh, who would speak to you about their boxing life that I've changed. And it ain't been about glorifying fighting. I've talked to them with words of wisdom about life, like life skills, mm-hmm. how to learn to, you know, not react on certain things and focus on family. Yeah. I still give off some young people now, ring me, good boys, like the boxer, and say, he rings me for advice sometimes. goes, I think, how do I just tell him that good advice when I fucking can't tell it to myself sometimes? But I'm starting to tell me it myself. Yeah. Yeah. Everything starts This is massive things. for me to let go. Massive. Yeah. Massive. How was it speaking about it, Tony? Um, I felt I felt like I weren't doing too well with to speaking to you today because I was a bit all over the place sometimes, but I wasn't because it's emotion. But, um, you know, you can't just sometimes generalise it and write it down like we're doing brackets like a maths sum yeah. it comes out as it comes out mm-hmm. I jump to one thing another there's that much in there you know what I mean yeah we've not even scratched the surface but never. the more important never. thing is yeah, never. you've been honest in, yeah. about the emotion the pain that you've caused the yeah. heartache like I say yeah. some people won't forgive you but that's fine as long as yeah. you forgive yourself and understand yeah. that you can yeah. control now the future of your life to yeah. then help others you will battle yeah. every day it's a painful fucking journey yeah. life ain't all yeah. fucking nice music and money yeah. coming in it's life is a slog life mm. is painful but it's how you you drive it mm. to whatever mm. you want you can have a good life you can have mm. good days you will have bad days just like anyone yeah. you are human you aren't immune because you served mm. over 20 years in the yeah. jail if not you will be more vulnerable than the average person because of the shit mm. you have seen mm. the shit you have caused but mm. you're here you're still mm. fighting. You're still mm. pushing forward. You want to make a better life from yourself. You're still young. Mm. Still handsome, isn't it, Lisa? He says, oh, still oh, handsome. Fine. Yeah, yeah um, nice. You've still got yeah. a lot of shit going yeah. for you. Yeah. You'll get yeah. a lot of respect and love for this. I know you've started yeah. on Instagram as well. Um, mm. Tony Argent, I'll leave the link in the description. Mm. You want to get a book out? Documentaries, yeah. possible for them. Yeah, this is the yeah. shit that can happen. This is why these platforms are great because it gives people an opportunity mm. to show them their true self, their true character, mm and also to try and make an honest living mm. when it all comes down to it it's mm. just to make an honest living for anybody watching for anybody listening maybe even in prison or maybe they're going mm. through the struggle Tony who wants to be a gangster mm. who thinks they're a tough I'll man what advice would you give for them I'd say um, I'd say please just please please fucking just let go don't bother honestly it's nothing like the fucking movies mate it's just a load of stress it ain't nothing like Peaky Blinders don't watch Peaky Blinders yeah, because that's full of fucking <laughs> load of bollocks. Please don't believe it all. Yeah, some some make it in life, some don't. I never made fuck all out of it. I lost, spent loads of money, sniffed loads of gear, caused nothing but ag, hurt people's lives, hurt people, painful, painful for my people, painful for their people, and it galista goes on. Mm-hmm. Just do something different. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Vic Dart is someone I know. Vic said a good thing. I'm sure Vic said once, yeah. what a waste. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? What, we, what Vic was ready to do, and what, yeah, what we're ready, yeah. what Vic's proper, what we're ready to do sometimes. Or Vic said, "Are we fucking mad? What we try and like, you know, what we're about to do mm-hmm. for the cause? You yeah. know what I mean? Fucking leave. They're all the men that have got me on here because they're all good people. Yeah, all yeah, there's not many. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, there's not many bad people you've ever had on this show. So do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I speak as a fine. I won't be sitting here now. Yeah, yeah. 
Blink, before we finish up, we'll touch on Blink, oh, Glasgow guy. Blink, man. Fucking Blink's, potty. Uh, listen, yeah. I love Blink, mate. I'll go, <laughs> Blink, Blink, when we do me set, when I first got the long and art, and there was, um, world, uh, we was crazy, me and Blink, there was a World Cup come on, and uh, England were playing, I'm not right, full mm-hmm. of English supporter, but uh, they you know when crowds whistle when there's a penalty, that long whistle noise. Me and Blink used to do it, and everyone's going, what's the matter with it? Blink and me used to do it all the way through uh-huh. to annoy, annoy people. Annoy people. Yeah. yeah. Me, and, me, and, me and Blink was just like, Blink's a fucking funny guy, yeah, mate. he's funny as He spoke, pulled yeah. uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan, the uh, snooker his dad. dad was there. Good man, Ronnie. Yeah, looked after good me. Blink's Ronnie, dad good man dad. out there, for Ronnie out there as well. Good man. He, used to, uh, he was at the phone box once and uh, Blink pulled down, some of them, I think, pulled down his shorts. Weren't Blink, but someone else did. And Ronnie got so sick of this on the occasion, he just flicked him off. We're standing in the phone box naked like this. <laughs> and the woman governor come round, yeah, with a load of border visitors <laughs> and the most violent probably place in the country at the time. And I remember this woman's face going like that. And he, was t- and he turned around going, yeah, what you got to do, son, when you hit the black stripe ball there, you should have gone there. And she was just naked, like mm-hmm. standing there in the phone box. Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> Blink went, oh, I can't hear him. And that big, deep Scottish accent, you know, lovely man, yeah, Blink. Mad. Blink, Jimmy E. Lee's friend, good stuff, mm-hmm. good times. Ollie, we had a good spur down there. Paul Bryan, you know. Gary Edney, loads of people, Jolly Cool, mm-hmm. loads of good stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's good people. Yeah. Yeah. But Tony, for coming on today, brother, and yeah. um, pulling your heart out and yeah. opening up, it takes courage. That yeah. shows you how far you've come to try and change the chapter yeah. and flip the page and to move on with your life. Yeah. Would you like to finish up on anything? Uh, yeah, just of um, yeah, uh, just I'm hoping that from the day I leave here is just a bit more peace now. Do you know what I mean? I hope so. I'm quite positive. But, uh, and sorry for anyone I've caused any problems to. Sorry I said I wouldn't use it, but there's only one word for it. There ain't another made up word for it, but I am generally. If I've hurt people along the way, you know, then like that was what it was then, but it ain't what I was now. So, you know, I'm, I've, never, I've never been happy in what I've done. So, yeah. if that's good enough for everyone. You know, and I'm working hard to change others. So that's the least I can do is to help some other people not cause any more grief than what I've done. Do mm-hmm. you understand what I mean? Yeah. Fair play, Tony. It's, yeah. it's a lot of bravery to come on today to share yeah, your story, you. especially with the reputation that you do have. Yeah. You're still young. You're mm-hmm. clearly sorry for your pro- your mistakes mm-hmm. that you've done, the damage that you've caused. Yeah. And the only thing you can do now is prove to people actions speak louder than words to yeah. now and become a better person, try and help others, and try yeah. and balance out life a bit and and bring some goodness into the world. You're clearly a good mm. guy. I've, I genuinely want yeah. to see you do well, man. You're clearly, you. honestly, Thanks, honestly, I mean yeah. that. And we've yeah. got a documentary I'm going to get you involved in next yeah, year as well, you. which was, um, yeah. should help. And yeah. yeah, we can just keep chipping away. You can just keep trying. Mm. But the fact that you're here um, shows you how far that you've come. But thank you. F- yeah, for coming thanks, on today, brother. Thank Listen, you, no, I really yeah, appreciate yeah, it, mate. Love thanks you, brother. You thanks, mate. Take Cheers, care. James. Bless. Thank you. Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.